Welcome to Starfinder, the Fragments of Eternity, not Session 43. So put your disappointment in a box right now. This is the story mm. so far, the meaning of life, in Starfinder, other titles to follow. I'm Ryan, the GM of this shit show. Uh, here are the players so far. He changed his name, am I first? Yeah. Yeah, first. Oh, fuck <laughs> you. Yes, fuck you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alex, and I have played Nix Five, the Android mechanic. Fuck you. This this fucking guy. <laughs> good typing. Good evening. Good night. Uh, and goodbye. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm Colin. I play. I play. I, 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 I play. I play. Um, he plays his trade. And what do you play? As Lyco Quint, and. Uh, and we'll continue to do so. <laughs> I'm sure nobody at home can see the name <laughs> shenanigans going on. No, but that's our <laughs> highest level Patreon. If anything, we'll you don't need to go into this. Uh-huh, yes. Deal oh. with it. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. I am indeed Callum, <laughs> and I play Zig. The I was going to say the Starfinder. The <laughs> I mean the yeah. Starfinder. <laughs> The eponymous Starfinder. <laughs> I the am Starfinder. Zig the Starfinder. I mean, you um, were told to go find uh, yourself amongst the stars. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Yes, sorry. That's for that's for later on in this episode. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm Zig. I play Zig. No, I'm Callum. I play Zig, the space rat from <laughs> the sun. There we go. Yeah, I am. We're currently down. Uh, a Nico that plays Zora. But hopefully he'll join very, very, very soon. Like in the next couple nice. of seconds, soon. Oh, I thought that would work. Yeah, but it's fine. It will yeah. eventually work one day. Um, I just keep, just keep yeah, booing him. Just keep doing that. Yeah, whatever that is. Um, so tonight's plan, instead of doing session forty-three, since scheduling's been like you all wanted, like everybody wanted, is to do a. I don't want to watch. Th- episode 0 all the way up to 42 let's just jump in now because that makes sense so what we'll do is we'll just go through what happened so far and then talk about what we think is likely to happen coming up and then ideally it means I don't actually have to write the ending that means you will write it during this chat which is great we can just stop now and just say yep that's yeah, it that, that happened yeah goodbye and we're um, done that's it that's, so that's the if end wants the to really just, yeah if somebody wants the really abridged version of Starfinder <clears> it's, it's here this is it You've Please give me a brief chat book. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll be releasing 17 individual Kickstarters because we all want money. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Let's see. Can I just dump this in? Ah. Let's go for it. Does this work? Cool. Let's see if I can get this done. Dun, 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 dun. Best not on my thinking music. I don't actually have the rights to it. Copyright for it. Uh, yeah. You don't have the rights for your own thinking music? I don't. And it's... That's upsetting. It's quite sad, actually, isn't it? Um, okay. mm. Dun dun dun! The story dun, is so dun, dun. Um, Yeah, so at some point Nicole will join us, but let us start with what people expected before the game started. Right, let's go Ooh. all the way back to the beginning. And then before the beginning, that's where we'll start. There was a before? Before the beginning. Yeah. Not the bang, not the word, the real beginning. Yeah. To quote. So first. Obviously I, I spoke to everybody at some point and invited you to this wonderful game that has been unexpected is my definition so far of the story. Um but yeah, like I don't know, we'll do it in obviously the, the order we're all used to. Uh, <gasps> Alex. Cause Hi, I'm Nico. Uh, we yeah. all do our nuclear impressions. Um, primarily, like you'd never RP'd with me before in terms of GM player relationship. Not with your GMing. Yeah, I've, um, I've we played side by side though. Yeah, uh-huh. flirting right. over the table. Yeah, it was good, and under the table, same cases as well. Yeah, yeah it's, it's different on this, Ooh. but, yeah. <laughs> but it, you know, it fulfills a purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, it <laughs> but yeah, so uh, like, you're one well, of the heteros. D- don't fine. label me with this horrible. Yeah, Lewis, <laughs> Alex, no, come on, he's an android. So. And I will 
flirt with whoever I want. Yeah. Don't try and program him. He's yeah. not yeah. a skater boy, though. <laughs> no. I, You're not my coder. <laughs> see you later, boy. Um, so, yeah, having now dissected that part of my psyche. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, what did I expect? I'm actually struggling to remember exactly what was I expected because we are probably known for having quite in depth chats about role playing mm -hmm. um, and the nature thereof. Um, also, this was my first venture into Paizo. Uh, yeah. I'd obviously been aware of Pathfinder, but I hadn't actually looked at it before jumping into Starfinder. Mm -hmm. um, so my only real experience at that point was 5th edition. So I think I was mostly expecting, you know, fighting goblins in space. Um, yeah. yeah. It's Which difficult. to briefly, but... Yeah. Okay. Um, so expecting a slightly easier system as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's probably another discussion to be had later in this. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, but I think also what I was expecting is kind of more exploring, like, oh, down on the ground, exploring planets and things, um, you know, a little bit more, I guess, because I'm used to kind of role-playing in worlds that have, you know, the wild frontier and forests and things, whereas once you're in a sci-fi setting, this kind of survivalism isn't... Yeah, it's almost like really a matter the, the, in the core systems. The world in itself isn't about you versus the world because there's a comfort yeah. level that sci-fi can can bring. Obviously, not every sci-fi setting is the same, but like space opera level sci-fi generally says, right, the mundane is taken care of. Yeah, where's your yeah. story now? Right, um, Star Trek so styles, that, for example. Yeah, I guess I almost expected that we'd be out on the frontier, um, dealing with that. Partly because now having started as GM myself, I'm also aware that that shit's easier. Because, you know, then you're just kind of dealing with monster stat blocks and things, whereas dealing with politics of many factions <laughs> gets uh, convoluted Welcome quickly. Welcome to my headache. Many yeah. factions yeah. Handle. Very fast. Um, yeah. yeah. So that can be very difficult to keep track of, so I am impressed by that. And trying to keep every different, you know, faction distinct, um, and even the characters within them. Um, and it is challenging, right? Like, it is, because obviously yeah. I'm one me. And that is difficult from like Jimmy. It's why I like doing things like this, those projects, because yeah. it means I get to try and expand on how I'm presenting things to you guys. Um, yeah. And it's nice to hear that it does come across that they feel different. So that's oh, it. Yeah. But no, I think the other thing for me was um, just in terms of Nick's, I was like, I just, the first thing I did in Starfinder, obviously, was open the book, look at the character <laughs> options. See the races, go to A for Android, mm -hmm. being the first letter, and go, cool, I've read one race, and that is the one I'm going to pick, because it's badass. Yeah, the Androids um, are I can get any issues. further in the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so shame so... half of their stats were under the poison rules, as we will discuss. Yes. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, I was kind of expecting, yeah, to be more action-focused. Um, I'm used to playing more charismatic characters obviously in like I'm a charisma primary in D&D &D usually um, I'm usually the guy talking and causing problems more than anything so Nyx is the complete he is playing him very flat very cold calculating logical still get some of his like the, there's still an edge of anger and frustration coming through but he's been less action Hero than I expected, I guess. Uh huh. Yeah, like, like I mean, there's been a couple of moments that I would say. Oh, he can hold his own. But definitely, um, like I mean, there, uh, just a certain scene where you walk in and go, "There is a bomb," um, comes straight <laughs> to mind, obviously. In there is a bomb. But that is the shock value of having this flat character walk in and go, "This is my counter offer. It's a bomb." <laughs> um, yeah, we'll get we'll get to oh, that. Yeah. Well. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's been it's also been really good to have you as a like from a GM point of view. It's been obviously like I wasn't familiar with you as a as my player, not as a fellow player, yeah. right? Because that's always a different perspective. Because it's instead of me and you making up the shenanigans to harass Nick, for example, it would be. Uh, <laughs> I mean, to make Nick's life easier, obviously. Um, yes. Yeah, it's been oh, clearly, yes. That's always the case. Yeah, it's been. Like obviously, I wouldn't even say me versus you, but it's been kind of like us versus the system, right? Us versus oh, Starfinder. Yeah. Um, yep. And that has been super interesting. I love the like exploring the journey that obviously you kind of presented me 
with when you designed Nyx and you were like, does this work for you? Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, I'll be specifically vague about that journey, but um, people that have watched so far will probably get exactly the direction it's going, hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, by now. And yeah, it's been it's been interesting. It's been really fun for me doing a lot of existentialism, a lot of weird metaphysical shit with them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, but like, opportunity you have in sci-fi. This is it, yeah. Plus, like, introducing people like Alice has helped as well. The fact that she stuck mm -hmm. around for you and her to have some strange interactions again. We'll go into that, I think, a bit more as we review the sessions. But yeah, like, it has been super fun for that. Anything else you want to add about your... Uh, <laughs> journey into Starfinder. No, no. Um, <clears throat> there's more, much more chat to be had yeah. on the other aspects. Colin, what about you? What were you expecting? Because obviously you'd not long come off RP journeys with me. so Yeah, um, and so it's hard actually going back to recall exactly what I did expect. Mm -hmm. I probably was anticipating something more akin to what we got than Alex was on account of, yeah, as you say, having just been out of a game with yourself as GM. Uh, the 13th age, or the 13th icon, 14th icon, 14th fuck, I fuck, 13th fuck. age is the system, and the 14th icon, I gave all the 13th age, called the 14th icon, yep. uh, which was very story heavy, mm -hmm. uh, it was very uh, grand in scale, mm -hmm. I think that's fair to say, and we did a lot more talking with each other, with lower characters trying to work out how x knows y and what it will mean for z or sorry z sorry apologies to those who speak proper words um it, it was it was a lot more that than combat which did happen there was combat it was a relatively combat light game i would say probably combat light lighter even in its long ass run than this has already been mm -hmm. excuse me and uh yeah i think i think i probably anticipated something a bit in terms of how it differed from what we got something a bit more like well maybe a bit more star warsy or star trekky like I, I i maybe thought there'd be a bit more like you know you're with the resistance or you're part of a big crew i didn't necessarily expect so much although obviously i knew there'd be a group of us I didn't necessarily expect so much that we would be quite a traditional adventure party dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, whereby we're sort of financially led. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, so yeah. it's, it is, it's not quite what I anticipated in terms of that. But I think I think it was pretty close. Like, I don't think I was really shocked coming in that the game sort of took the the tone it did and maybe went with some of the plot work points. And that's not, again, to say that I necessarily predicted them. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say. Oh, I knew. I knew that was coming. Knew that was coming. Some stuff I did, obviously. But I had a sense of what a Ryan game feels like. Uh huh. And this has definitely felt very much in line with with that. Um, but not completely. It is not the same game by any means as Thirteenth Age. We're not the same party, so it has been different. Um, we've been more edgy. I want to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, think that's valid. <laughs> I don't mean that as a term of derision. Uh, but I think we are an edgier party. I think if you could compare some characters across and find them a bit edgier than equivalents, like I think I would be, despite the latter being played by um, Nico in the original, I think you could compare Zig and Orn, the original, the prior, Zig and Orn, quite well. Okay. Yeah. In the sense of, of the. the both got a bit of a sense of wonder and not quite being sure what they're doing there. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, like, uh, Orn was, yeah, weird backstory and all that. But Orn was kind of just getting along. Mm -hmm. uh, Zeg's been much more in his own head, um, much more concerned about what is my role, uh, what do these people think of me, what do I think of myself, should I use my abilities to do X, Y, Z, because, you know, dumping solar radiation in people is really unpleasant, even if they are a threat. Mm -hmm. um, and I think yes. <laughs> that is what I mean by edgy. Like, I think I think there's there's definitely the characters have um, elements of doubt and uncertainty about their place and about their own nature. Mm -hmm. uh, Nyx, uh, in particular, obviously, he has previous incarnations. He's not quite sure about from what I gather. And, and there's obviously a spiritual element there of, you know, what what is 
life, what is sentience? Obviously he has it, but what does that mean? Mm -hmm. but what does it mean for an android to be truly alive and sentient? What does it mean for your spiritual life? Yeah, yeah, that's all stuff that we're sort of not directly, you know, he's not he's not soliloquizing to use a word you used earlier, mm -hmm. uh, to camera. There isn't a camera, but imagine for the purposes of this around a camera. Mm -hmm. About oh, whoa, I am lo, I I I am an android. What does this mean? He's not saying that, but it's very clearly implicit in his story that there is a question of what the fuck it, it means spiritually. Um, to be an android. I think that's cool. I think that's something you can't really avoid with the story of the system. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to feature androids, there, I mean, there's literally a story about slave labor implicit in their, their their overarching story whereby you can't really include them without sort of touching on the fact that they're not really seen as people by a lot of people because mm -hmm. um, they are artificial. Now, We've not really hit that directly at all, but that's been there floating in the background in his interactions with Alice, who is like this step further from organic life, mm -hmm. whereby she didn't even have a body. She's robotic now, but well, she's kind of android now. It's it's not it's not clear. <laughs> but originally, she was she was just an artificial. Like, there there was no physical entity that was Alice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in fact, you you gave her again a physical entity yeah indeed and uh and of course when zig interacted with her it Is went that, weird like, and it, yeah <laughs> interact with, you know what well, i like it That's you nice. know what i mean specifically he uh, did his whoa mind mind melt she did his mind melt um, <laughs> because does she have a mind mm -hmm. she is an ai and an ai is comparable yeah. to me but and i think i actually said that i was like does can I, I? I think I, before I did it, I asked if I could, and you're we like, well, I don't know, can't you? <laughs> and I'm not saying that's necessarily a dark or edgy subject inherently, but it does lead down some corridors for Zig and for Alice, of course, and for Nix, that are a bit, you know, you know what is my place in the world? And, and, and it's not something that, you know, uh, Zora uh, or myself are exempt from. Um, Lyco, as a character, has a lot of well, he could be very what's me he isn't he's got a lot of angst that he sort of keeps pretty well hidden he's got a lot of um fear actually he's got a lot of fear um he does not want to die mm -hmm. um because he has and for him it's oblivion um and that's the thing you're in a setting where the gods literally exist and you can know that personally mm -hmm. um Faith isn't really much of a part of it in, in a world where you can literally interact with higher powers. And knowing especially that, like, Phrasma, the god of, like, the afterlife, the death... Don't like whatever, you! Yeah, like, yeah. you're kind of, like, something um, off-putting now to her. You're an abomination, and it's yeah. through no fault of your own, and for that, you're doomed. Yeah, um, and you're like, that's something you, like, actively have to face waking up every day. That one's not a beer, by the way. That's a cola. Diet but, cola. <laughs> Uh -huh. it, mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. It is. I, I, I would tell you if I were drinking. I was earlier. Um, Anything else you'd like to add about specifically? Pre -game? Yes, and uh, on the top on the subject of of um, that like I so I think coming in, I didn't necessarily expect us all to have come to the, the table with characters who were quite so <sighs> unsure uh, of their place. There we're all people who have a lot of think doubt mm -hmm. and we're all kind of adrift uh and if you look at that compared to who i had played in that previous game i played yes. someone who was very certain he wasn't certain in the sense of knowing everything but he had his own very he knew who he, like, he, knew who he was beliefs. yeah like um like and he knew what he wanted to do and he knew what he thought Dude, was right and wrong who he had been what he wants to be what he is yeah like, it was very much a case of, I know what I am. I am a known And he was basically a good guy, whereas Lyco is kind of not. He's not bad, he's just kind of amoral. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I, he's, he's obviously got some surface level similarities, because here's the thing, dear listeners. Uh, if you let me play as an undead character, I will. 
That's that's how I roll. That's what I like. That is my shtick. I like the undead. I always have. Um, uh, and some people are, you know, some people have their I am going to play an elf. Elves are mm. just like people, but better in every way. Why wouldn't I play an elf? Well, Good for me... Line. yeah. <laughs> how are you called? Why am I being called out? Like I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's okay. Elves. I was always, I, I was elves. always a half elf. I, I really like, oh, I don't want to be one of those elf boys. Point, play another elf because I did briefly <laughs> play an elf, as Ryan can attest. Um, yeah. And it's something I would like to do again. But for me, generally speaking, I love the undead and getting to play one. But this is a very different one. This he's, he's not really undead in the way that we're used to from a lot of sayings. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't know what races are going to be going in. I wasn't sure what I was going to play. I was kind of thinking, I don't really give a shit about any of these. I'm not invested in any of their story. But of course, that's really difficult when you're not coming in with the standard fan. Of course, the standard fantasy races are at the back, mm-hmm. to be fair. But when you're not coming in with those standard uh, fantasy races that people are already got a degree of expectations about, familiarity with, and oh yeah, that ticks my XYZ boxes. Um, mm mm-hmm. I recognize that. And when we're not dealing with that, it is it's, it's difficult. You have to sort of do things that are cool and interesting to sell people on the races. And that's not to say that I wasn't necessarily interested or in, in like, I think they're all, all really cool, but none of them were really selling to me. None of them were like, this is what you need, God. You, you want to play that. It, it's yeah, plus for me as well, cheap like giving everybody the kind of primer of A, my vibe is probably for the crew, Guardians of the Galaxy, more so than Star Trek, right? 100%. Yes, and that has that been sort of true. Yeah, like it definitely shaped, if not became exactly what we ended up with because it's very much a, these are all very unique individuals. And my other main thing was if you can help it, don't pick something from the back of the book because there are these yes, new and interesting they do, they do. creations, you know, and like. The races are all interesting, like, you know, the Vesk, the Ahsoka, the Kasath, and, like, the, the Barai versions of them, like you are, Colin. Like, yeah, like, it is, it's <coughs> so much more interesting, never mind my personal It was interesting to me to come Android. in that they did do all of that, uh-huh. and give you races that could fit some of those niches, mm-hmm. but they also let you have the traditional fan, and why wouldn't they? Because it is in the Pathfinder universe. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But it is nonetheless strange, and, and I understand why you wanted us to go more for the original stuff. Um, also, just cause it because it was that's really sort of where the fuel right? comes from, right? Like, it, it was really kind of new and cool, and it stopped people playing into into like traditional viewpoints, like you know, elves are stuck up and mystical, right? Like, why don't you play a Kasathan? Because they are stuck up and mystical, right, in this world. So that's like your high elves now. Um, your kind of halflings or gnomes are now the Ahsoki, right? But then to the degree. They're also goblins, right? To a degree. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just super interesting. You're... It's also it's interesting to me that the one race that they've really, and I know it's because pies will love them, but the one race that they've really kept around are goblins. Yeah, I mean, mm. goblins yeah. are like in the blood of Paizo, I think, and that's fair. Their yeah. goblins are really good. I like yeah. their goblins. They are fantastic. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I love it. Still think we should have a goblin game. I mean, yeah. 100 but we can do that we can obviously it'd be called fiends like these right um the title oof. of the thing the campaign because of uh, <laughs> I, mean, I get the reference but also oof. Oh, yeah i know um but yeah i think that would be an interesting side thing but anyway callum <laughs> hi hello um hi so what was the question no <laughs> so, for that you've obviously you'd listened to a bunch of the RP stuff I'd done before in the form of I the had, Star Wars. I had. I'd listened to all of st- all, almost all of Star Wars. Um, and you played and a bit of Origin. A very tiny bit. I think out of the four games, four sessions, I was in two. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and going in, anyone anyone who knows me won't be surprised. Uh, going in, I was expecting to play be playing um, Stars of That Number. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as Soon, a space lover. Um, that's place player. Yeah. But no, that didn't happen. Um, but I think initially going in, I was definitely. I think I had preconception because I'd listened to all of Star Wars. I had preconceptions of oh, this is going to be Star Wars in a different, like, world, mm-hmm. um, and it wasn't. And at the same time, I also thought like when we were making Zig, 
I had major like, oh yeah, it's just going to be essentially like cool magic rocket, but mm -hmm. that also kind of didn't happen either, um, which I'm glad about to be honest. But um, it's well, there are definitely elements Actually, yeah, of that. There was definitely elements of that because but, obviously, if we look at like again jumping a couple of sessions in, like the, the conspiracy of Craig device, right? <laughs> like there's elements of yes. you working with Nix Five on that, right? Like there was definitely like the collector side of Rocket, like the shiny things, right? Definitely elements of Rocket there, hundred percent. But like Zig is one hundred percent his own creature now, yeah. Mm hmm. I also um. It's definitely, as, as Colin was kind of saying earlier, um, it's the first time I've been in a game where the characters are still technically being built. Mm. Like, I've I've only really ever played, like, I know my character knows, I know exactly who my character is. And this is the thing, this is how I'm playing them, this is this. Um, generally, everyone else is on the same sort of, of sort of boat on that, and it's been it's been really interesting to see... That yeah. actually, you know, it's it's more of like starting with like a rough concept of your character, and it goes in a completely different direction to what I expected, or what I expected the crew's direction to go in. Like, um, you know, learning about all the, um, seeing where Nix has ended up and where mm -hmm. uh, Lyco's going and the the captain and everything is kind of not where you'd initially expect. Well, this is them it, yeah. to go. Like, I mean, even if you take, let's take Emlyn's character for example. Um, shout out to Olka, mostly because, yeah. Um, Come back. The Emlyn Dally on the surface was a runaway that became a smuggler to survive, and mm -hmm. was a pilot had latent psychic powers and essentially told like <laughs> I remember Olka saying to me, "So think Han Solo, but." A sidekick lady, and I went, okay, I'm there, yeah, perfect. <laughs> I am, um, you know, the mirror shades on, feet up on the the dashboard of the spaceship, right? Like, yeah, we got this. And then think of the journey she took in the, like, was it begin? What? When did we lose? I, Emily, let me see if I can find the the session again, because I think it is somewhere in chapter. Three, right? Maybe. Yeah, somewhere there. Somewhere in chapter three, I forget where though. Shop spots, not a docks, maybe. Yeah, sometimes the goblins win. Round about then, I think. Yeah. We're losing. Yeah. So yeah. Session sixteen uh, or seventeen. Oh, what genius named that session? <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, like I think it's super interesting seeing like the journey somebody takes from picking up a cup. Right, um, just something as simple as that, and even right from the start, it was a uh, Emlyn's journey was, okay, I'm gonna do this thing. Why? Well, it's what I do, so I'm not gonna waste time thinking about it. That's my job to actively think first and then regret it later. Um, and it worked, worked really well, and I think it's been, as you said, Calum, like super interesting to see everybody play characters that they're maybe not 100 percent sure what how they're gonna turn out, right? Because yeah. yeah Playing something like D and D or like any generic fantasy game, you do have a oh I'll be a paladin and they'll be the paladin of X Y and Z, and that's your entire idea built because you know enough about fantasy. Whereas we're all brand new to Starfinder and every like all the cultural aspects of it were quite new, so we all kind of just yeah. went on that journey together, which was nice. Um, yeah, it's been it's been fantastic. Um, oh crap, I was about to say something. Shit. Ah! Shit. Oh, indeed. Well, we're talking about obviously Journey, Emlyn stealing a mug, uh, Ziggs. Oh yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, um, it was I, I kind of, you know, had a slight advantage as to like what the game was going to be like, being four games late, four sessions late. Uh, I think. I yeah, think you're five? No, session seven, I think, is when you joined us. Seven. Cause oh I'll... yeah, I sat in, I sat in on. Yeah, six, I think. Because uh, six, six is yeah, a wormhole right. situation. And that is a yes. That's right. Um, between six and seven, is when you left the Baskerville Research Station. Um, but no, yeah, it's been it's been really it it's been a really cool challenge trying to play 
someone who doesn't know who they are mm-hmm. <laughs> and what they are. It's 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 really interesting. It's really difficult, but it's um it's it's proven to be, you know, just super fun and just magnificent. Yeah. No, it has. It's been good. It's been really fun. Um, obviously, still no sign of uh, Nico yet, but Nico, let's, um, um, let's well, to go back to go uh, what Alex was saying about you keeping, um, you know, all of those different factions together, and then all the different characters from those factions, and keeping them thingy in your mind. The really cool thing I was going to say this earlier, but I, I didn't. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that the. the the really, the really cool thing is that, you know, the, the characters within, you know, you've got um, SK and, uh, you know, Wesland and all that. You've got got them in their places, but they're still not just what you'd imagine a stereotype of each, you know, organization or thing. You'd automatically go, well, they're from this organization, so they do this. They've still got that individualistic aspect to them, um, which I thought you've done really well. So Thank I thought you. I should tell you <laughs> no I, yes. I mean i'm not gonna knock back compliments um so yeah no, i appreciate that plus the good thing is you guys feeling the need to like highlight this stuff lets me know you are a enjoying the game that we've been playing for like nearly two years now and uh, <laughs> the, obviously i'm getting good at the hobby i love so that's always nice um, on sort of that note i think it was interesting seeing the uh the sort of clashes within who do you call them uh the yes. consortium Aspis, yes, I always, I always want to say yeah. something else, but um, it's asking, sorry. <laughs> um, the, the, uh, the, that was interesting, and it made sense for that particular organization to have some really nasty internal politics. Well, what, like, why don't we summarize that then, right? Because we're starting to talk about the um, the aspects of like sessions, etc., instead of summarizing. So, does somebody want to summarize what Colin's talking about, or Colin himself want to summarize? Just because imagine people are jumping in now, right? They don't know what we're talking about, so. Okay, so Albert Wesker, um. <laughs> <laughs> Resident Evil Space. <laughs> yeah, who wants to summarise the uh, the preamble that comes? What is Wesland's first name? Edgar. Edgar Wesland. Edgar. Edgar. <laughs> it really is or crazy. Edgar, <laughs> Edgar Wesland. Okay, we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, obviously our original contact with an mm-hmm. our original boss with. Given out the missions. I don't know if he was our first point of contact. I don't recall if that was ever actually established, but he was certainly the guy that, that said, go here, do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, maybe the, indirectly, but it was him that said He's it. definitely the one you only ever, like, through him and associate button. That was how you use contact to them. That's what's Oh, I forgot about button. Yeah. Oh. Associate button. Poor button. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Rip. Ripping, yeah. ripping. Ripping two, apparently. Um, yeah. <laughs> Now uh, that was yeah. That, so that was that was uh, the f- the first guy, and we were always a bit. Eh, this guy's dodgy. I mean, the company's dodgy. We're working for them, but yeah, because they're essentially like working with arms dealers, right? Money. So yeah. yeah, and he was obviously uh, a bit at odds with his boss. <laughs> and she was quite happy to see him replaced, and last we saw him, he was kind of swearing vengeance. And also, we'd established that he was some sort of rainbow smoke monster um <laughs> who, who can see but the dealings with him were very back room very very you know quite literally smoke filled rooms at certain points mm-hmm. there was that impression of things are a bit dodgy here stuff's going on behind the scenes i think that leads quite naturally into mo who is you know the head of this mm-hmm. yeah the ceo yep big powerful and you know no no not even amoral because i don't think it's so much not good as actively bad the sort of evil corporation mm-hmm. and the the sort of uh the interaction she had with the captain where she's quite well they, well you know why, why not replace him he sees his two. and there's there's that sense of like people are disposable to her, right? She's way up the top. Even the people relatively close in the peg in the pegging order, in the pegging, close pegging. Um even people quite high up the totem pole <laughs> are although that's a, a flawed compact are, you know, 
they're they're not really important. They're all replaceable. Um, and it makes obvious uh, implication that you're replaceable too. You're you're super replaceable. I can move you up to this position. Right now, you're not even in this, you know, mm-hmm. really replaceable position. Position, and that gives you the sense that this is a person who is just so high above it all. She really doesn't give a shit about the the cost, even to her corporation on the ground level. Well, yeah, like even look at what she offered both Emily and. Zora. Yeah, Moon. Right. It was like, okay, what do you want <coughs> for this this new like agreement that we've we've come to? Like a Moon. You know, she was that yeah. out of touch with people. And it's something you talked about at the time. It's like she doesn't know what to offer you. She's she's. It's been so long that since and she's not been you know mm-hmm. in this position of absolute power almost that that she doesn't know what a person on your operating at your scale would want. Like. What? What do you little people want? Do you, do you yeah, want moon? I mean, even if you look at the people she was speaking to, right? She has Emmeline Dally with that weird black box room in her head that obviously drew Emma O's attention straight away. Like, okay, I don't really care what else we were talking about. This is my new favourite thing. Yeah. Um, and then Zora, a war hero of the bad guys, right? You know, like, the Vesk Empire being the next, you know, galaxy over, or solar system over, whatever it is, and um, having the, like, again, the solar system-wide celebrity that is Zora the Abyss Deora. Yeah, like, it is bizarre because, to Emma O, what do you give a Vesk war hero that doesn't do war anymore, but you're saying, cool, I'm paying you to start a war for me? Go do that. What do you want for that? Like, I guess you'll need a moon, right? Somewhere to have. To yeah. Stage this from, I guess. So she she has no sense of scale. She has no sense of where to begin. Mm-hmm. Like the bedding, as it were. She just that's beneath her. And so the opening gambit is basically like, here's a big fucking thing. Why don't you have that? Go. But this fuck is why there were two buttons beneath her button, right on the elevator, right? You had yeah. Meng Po personnel, that. right? Um, which was yeah. the second button, and then the third button was Edgar Wesland's acquisitions, right? So, yeah, you were employed by the acquisitions department. Um, and and yeah. what a buy we were! <laughs> 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 oh dear, yeah. What, and what? obviously, they were in some ways paralleled with. Um, fuckaroo! Sorry, I'm really bad today. Uh, Abadar, Abadar Corp. Yeah, right. Like the banks, the, the god of banks. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Abadar Corp bank. Um, like Edgar definitely didn't seem to like Agent S. K. You know, definitely didn't like. Yeah. We as a bill, um, as it were. And there was a sense of these two being sort of opposing forces. Yeah, like I think as well. Like you were paid for. You know, any information, or if you can acquire said target, there was a lot more money at stake. Um, then things kind of went off the rails at that point, right? Because, I mean... Yeah. Like, let's. So that's a good point to think, play catch-up then, right? So let's have Zig summarise uh, Session Zero for us, since it is a bit out of sync. So for those of you who haven't watched, Session Zero is Graduation Day. Oh, graduation Day, which, oh man... It was heavy duty. So, you know, Zig's going about his um, normal. Um, he's just come back to the to the temple, you know, to for his graduation, um, which is a ceremony that everyone goes through eventually um, once they've kind of progressed to that level where they can just go out and, you know, spread their knowledge of the sun, learn as much as they can, you know, and you know, still have a home back within the temple. Um, kind of this sort of um, acknowledgement of your your growing of, of you know, power and th- th- growing up mm-hmm. sort of thing. Um, well, I guess this is growing. Yes. <laughs> and um, his sort of mentor, um, I was going to say Ezio, but it's not quite Ezio. It's Edzo. Oh, Edzo 14. Edzo. 
Enzo 14. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not Enzo. <laughs> Although if it was, it would be a very different story. Yeah, and then Enzo turns up yeah. with R2-D2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zig's just um, in ready player Zig. Oh dear. <laughs> yes. Um, Enzo 14. Um, rest her. Incidentally, a type of light bulb. Yes, that, that's, that's, how we, that's how we named her. I yep. forgot all about that. Yeah, oh she's a light bulb. God. She is a light bulb. The light to show, to guide Zig through his um, studies and devotions. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it comes up to graduation day and, um, you know, the, the Radiant Supreme, who we all know and love. There she was. Um, also the Radiant Supreme, yeah. Ah, that's a great impression yeah. of the Radiant Supreme, thank you. And there he is. <laughs> ah, it's so perfect. Um, but no, I hate you. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> and in that time, Zig goes to, to Mind Link with the Radiant Supreme to kind of, you know, share the, the stories, um, the, the memories he has of his crew and his stuff and, and everything. Yeah. And then... That was enough time for the Radiant Supreme to be distracted mm-hmm. and get quote unquote killed. Yeah, that definitely happened. Yeah, he got shot. Go yeah, on. he got shot. And then he come out of it, Radiant Supreme falls down, and then all of a sudden there's a bunch of drive folk coming in, and they're all like, right, we're just going to take that big shiny egg and kill everyone. Not we in that order. Say the D word. Sorry. And um, that was Zig's first um, experience with the Dry Queen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and Not to be the last, though. Yes. <laughs> uh, Edzo. Um, I think it was Edzo who, was, who told Zig to get the fuck away. Yeah, like she did her. Um, like, she activated like her solar armor and she, like, you know, jumped over and fought like the Queen head on to kind of give you time to like leave quite frankly um as you yeah like. um which which i did mm-hmm. um trying to run to that sort of like transporter room type thing which at the time i'm yeah. not 100 percent sure if you knew it was a transporter type room but yeah the big fancy like sigilly floor place yeah yes um, um uh, lots of trying not to get killed happened mm-hmm. um and then he very nearly got killed, and then the Radiant Supreme was there and was like, ha ha! I mean, ha 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 ha! Totally melted some folk, and it yep. looked like he was going to do well, and he didn't do so great, and it was very ambiguous whether or not he died or not. Yeah, like, it, it, it was. It was. I think we got transported just... just before it looked like it was might... Yeah, because I believe like the again. yeah, like the big paladin man was walking down the mm-hmm. the kind of the stairs into the the transportation kind of circle floor room thing. Yeah, yeah, and then they got transported to uh, elsewhere. Yeah, and that's the very concise version. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, it's um a very lot very happened. concise version. A lot happened in that that session zero. Um, and then um, he had like he had his first like sort of meditative um, moments with the with the egg, or in in game anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the, like the night before your uh, your uh, big day, as it were. Yes, which was good, you know. Can I get my image of Emma O opened as well? <coughs> here, let's click in there, and then can I move that to the front? Sure. Move this to the front. Let's see. Let's uncover her. Where did she go? There she is. Emma O. Yes. <laughs> for some reason, I did have a handout for her, but apparently I don't anymore. But yeah, no, that was um, our wonderful session. Our session zero. I mean, you went back to do to give you a bit more of a, a run up to kind of yes. start in our ridiculous journey of Starfinder, because even in sessions like 1 to to 6, a fair chunk had happened to the crew 
Um, oh yes, Alex, would you like to take us through the early days? Maybe, assuming you're still with me. Yes, I was talking. I've oh. been talking. <laughs> You've been muted the whole time. Yeah. I, I'm good at this. I'm pretty sad. Do you want to um, give us the highlights of your comments that we've missed? Do you think I listen to what I say? Uh, oh, what I've said? <laughs> I'd probably, probably myself, hmm, yes. And the occasional innuendo. Excellent. Um, <laughs> but yes. Uh, actually, no, I, prob- I don't know if I'd have any innuendos that Colin wouldn't have piped in with anyway. Um, but anyway, yes. So, chapter one. Yeah, chapter uh, one, stationary supplies. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> We we did a spook. Um, yeah. Now that was actually, yeah, the entire thing had quite an eerie feel for a few episodes. Yeah, it was um, a proper kind of like that was. Ideally, it was the. It was a bit alien feeling. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. I have very fond memories from a traveler game long ago, where the intro to that was set on the spooky space station. So I did my kind of real homage mm-hmm. to that as the opening to this, and for me, leaving you guys in an empty room means you look at your character sheets for stuff to do, right? Yeah from a concept point of view. So it's interesting to see what players do when there's no obvious answer. Because um, mm-hmm. sometimes that gets the brain thinking in ways where, oh, this this isn't like a video game where you press X to progress. You yeah. actually need to think about what X you, know, you want to press or mm-hmm. what X could even be or the existentialism of X, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like, right away from the start, literally it was the most generic quest ever. Deliver a crate to a space station in the middle of nowhere that's hidden away. Here are the coordinates, and don't open the crate. That was it. Yeah, I think that's when we got off to the really good start of the captain going, next, open communications. Done. Yeah. Yeah, kind of set the tone for our relationship. Yeah, um, like it was. It was good. Cl- Clippy made an appearance as well. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Guest starring um, Clippy. <laughs> uh, there was obviously the uh, flashlight incident. Yes. Um, uh, so, oh man, like I think to not skip too far ahead, session one of turning up in the diaspora asteroid belt, finding the station, calming the station, and going, "Hello, we're here," and then there being nothing. And then every day debating, yep. do we scan the space station or do we not? Is that rude? Is it not? What do we do? Um, trying to get, like, a lot of that was us trying to, like, find out what mm. the game was going to be like, I guess. What mm. like what type of people we would have been in the game. Um, the, the royal we there. And uh, then obviously you get that wonderful reply. Hello, I'm Alice. Yep. Yeah. So I'm just trying to think back, and I actually think it was Emelyn that opened the communications channel. Was it was done. Emelyn, yeah, it was literally just was it. done. It was yeah. me yeah, that did... That was good. Did, sorry, yeah, and it was Nyx that did the scanner and rolled a natural one and, got and just walked out of the room yeah. without talking about it. Yeah, and that was like... Yeah. We, we had some nice inter- interaction discussions of is Zora annoyed at the fact that he just left without talking, or is this something you are used to? And it was a nice yeah. establishing... Session. I think both, of yeah, both of those points, like Emlyn's relationship and you know not standing on like ceremony, uh-huh. um, just the whole thing. It did jump straight into a oh, this is a functional crew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it yeah. isn't. Really this isn't our first rodeo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not going to be like oh yes, captain. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it's well. Like it goes with how casual Zora's captaining is, right? Yes, because it's so so casual. Like you imagine, like it's deliberately not. Vesk style. Um, and you almost get the feel that if there's probably lots of legit crew people who would have been put off by his lack of management, I guess. Uh huh. Um, you can imagine a lot of the very respectable pilots who, you know, <laughs> want I a feel captain. Like he's a captain by default. Yes. Mm. See, like, well, it's they're not going to be the captain. I, I know about it. I'll be a captain. You got the and best rates the on the spaceship because he was so famous. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, just the entire thing very quickly jumped into it. Yes, this is a this is a fun crew. Mm-hmm. Um, no, it was uh, like yeah, like as you say, like right, right from the start, where the first thing that was asked of the game was cool. Open up a comms channel to hail the space station. Done. Uh, okay. Uh, 
<laughs> I was kind of hoping I'd have more time to think of the next part of the roleplay. Um, yeah. But no, that was but good. It just makes sense that Emily would be like that. Yeah, she, uh, so direct, yeah. and she never changed from being that either. It was everything was direct and to the point, which I enjoyed. Yeah, um, I always wish we had more time for Nix and Emily to interact, actually, because yeah, a few times we did. It was uh, just just a blunt off. Uh huh. And it was very good because it was like you know abrasive conversation versus um, direct, and it's yeah, it was super interesting mm. to see that from characters that yeah. would have worked together for a while, I guess, because results are important, yeah. right? Um, also, the reflection, I guess, of psychic versus android and everything. But yeah, um, then we obviously got onto the space station, couldn't get through the doors. Oh, my favorite, like the, even just from where the session comes from, I think that's the wrong door. Just the yep. the scene of <laughs> being this pristine white hangar. And having like panels coming out of the walls and computer like holograms appearing, and Alice being like, "So like, where is everybody?" And you're like, "No, we asked you that, Alice. Where is everybody?" Yeah, yeah. And her being like, "Oh yeah, I don't know." And then <laughs> opening the door, and then having Zora and Lyco, the almost shot from the back with the door in between opening, and it's just the dark corridor, the flashing red lights, the alarm klaxon, and then uh, the door closing again, and being like, "I think that's the wrong door, Captain. I think it was a uh, Lyco's line." And yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was such such a good first episode, right? <laughs> oh, mm. fantastic! And I feel that's yeah. pretty much what's happened for the rest of the game. That sums up that format has been the whole game, um, <laughs> without a shadow of a doubt. Don't do the thing you've been paid to do, but also <clears> go <throat> into the dark, klaxon ridden corridor. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, and as you were saying, yeah, flashlights. Oh man! Yes. Then we wander into the dark. <laughs> there's flashlights. <laughs> there's us going. Oh no! How do we see in here? Uh, yeah. And then how do next we session. We see in the dark. Oh, half of us can see in the dark, and others we all have torches anyway. Yay! Yes. <laughs> well, I mean these things problems. happen. Yeah. Right. And, and how are you supposed to find those sort of details in that rule book? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, saltiness again. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. That's <laughs> you're allowed to have uh, your opinions. This is the recurring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, It'll come up a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. It and was, then um, sorry, continue. Uh, I'll just go continue with the chapter summary, but if you want some throw shade at Yeah, pleasure. I was just going to say regarding like the very sort of early interactions, I decided early on I would be, before I'd even settled on trying to do an accent for him, Lyco would be most comfortable calling him Captain. Mm-hmm. And I've tried not to deviate from that, because I just think it fits him. Like He's been out of that structure and he's in it a bit. Uh-huh. Yeah, and he just sort of he doesn't even think about it. He just defaults to. Sometimes we'll call him Cat, but like if he has to quickly do something, he's going to be quite respectful, and mm-hmm. uh, just because that's sort of in indoctrinated into him. Yeah, that makes steward. sense though. Like yeah, like mm-hmm. as I said, you 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 were a steward. That's that was your jam. Do you know what I mean that's to be expected? To be honest, oh, I'm making escape mm. huge there for a second. Um, but yeah, it's been. A journey, quite frankly, right from the yeah. start. <laughs> and yeah, we got into the space station. The crew were orbs. Yeah, they were um, plasmoid they did things. Not have been probed. Uh, yeah, there was lots of spooky walking through um, abandoned laboratories and things. And mm-hmm. what yeah. does this code name for the project mean? And uh, yeah, probably yada, like yada, yada, yada. F, you know spy horror type stuff really wasn't it yeah start? kind of got the um resident evil vibes actually yep. Yep. yeah yes definitely. first resident evil film really mm-hmm. um yeah, also, like, you know. in, a, in a very broken facility unsure yep. what's going on oh dear why are we here yeah also are every we corridor feeling like yeah, it's okay. I, actually <laughs> back to the very first thing you asked like about what we expected going in not that <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No. I am Let's sorry, go. folks. It's okay. Welcome to this well, you will session. Do. So Ridiculously you long, I'm not sure though. It's okay, do I just do your intro of who you are? Hello, I'm Nico. I play Zora, the vice captain. Yes, so we're doing Appreciate the story so far. Chat. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Um, yes. Um, we are on session two. The Goo Crew. We are making quick progress. Um, um, well, before we go ahead of that, Let's just throw Nico into the fire straight away. So I've asked everybody else this question, right? Who's your favourite party member? Uh, 
Alice, <laughs> obviously. What's your favourite <laughs> scary movie? I actually know <laughs> Ivan for, for... Well, I don't know, man. I think, like, if I was not to say, like, mix it to that question with all the shit that he just <laughs> holds and all the shit that he just needs to be all the time, like, well, I think I think I would be deserved to be, like, voted as worst captain. So, oh, I'm, I'm glad he said that, given that nobody else asked that question. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, none of us asked <laughs> Thank that. You. Um, <laughs> my, my, my question was, what was your, like, kind of expectations before playing? Like, so obviously you've been invited to the game, we'd spoke about, about making characters, um, like, what, like, I guess just what you're expecting versus what you ended up with as a game? Um, I actually imagined it to be much like it is, to be honest with you. Um... Probably, because I think out of I expected to maybe have a bit more shenanigans, as in be a bit more boisterous. But I mean, eh. to give you a bit of a, a kind of an intro as well, since I spoke about this for everybody else as well. Like you've been in the aforementioned Star Wars game entirely mm -hmm. with me. You were then in Origins with me after that, and also like before Origins, you were in like half, just over half of. Uh, the 14th icon game that we'd spoke about as well earlier and yeah like you've been been on quite a big rpg with me. yeah yeah you've been around yeah. yeah um so you obviously had a bit of an inkling of what to expect from me at least as a gm as well i mean i was expecting it to go i mean pretty much exactly how it went i mean obviously the only person that <laughs> Really had RP'd way before they like, got into it was Colin. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I yep. I was. I, I expected Colin to be Colin, and Colin <laughs> is Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Colin <laughs> Gallagher. Oh, I like that you were as your captain. Colin, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can't take um, the best coach. I actually well. mentioned Orn earlier. And I mean, that is in the most complimentary manner possible. I, still I couldn't think, have possibly uh, taken it any other way. And that is I why still you remain that, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Still think for how like New York to RP, you're probably like one of the, the better RPs that I know. And Thank it's, you. It's just... weird because I don't know if he gets that title anymore, given how long he's actually been in RP world. No, yeah, it's been right? a yeah. while now. Yeah, um, yeah, it's been a while. But well, this is like technically this is second. Only my third game. Oh, third, mm -hmm. isn't it? Third. Oh, Origin, oh, remember? Shit. Origin, oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's like, right. The half counts. This, a half so that, this half is my half second long running game. Mm -hmm. Um. And I I, I, I I forget rules quite often, I'll be honest. <laughs> um but I'm quite I'm quite I'm quite proud of how I've come along. I definitely think I've improved. Um I can be a bit sloppy, but I definitely think Yeah, I, I, I feel I feel quite happy with, with how I've progressed as a role player. Mm -hmm. I know some people will have been doing it for a very long time. Um but I think I've I've shaped up quite nicely and, and everyone's been very complimentary, so that's helped. <laughs> That's the thing, like, see with uh, just listening to, like, the start of, for example, Nico way back at the start of Star Wars, to listening to him now is interesting mm. because there is a, like, the, not that Nico hasn't had a strong identity with, say, Andar back from the Star Wars game, um, I feel like you started that really strong with uh, describing Andar's entire intentions, like, the anger at the treatment at the hand of the Imperial Guards, for example, was always the, mm -hmm. I think me and Nico are going to get on in an RP world. This straight away with your interactions where it goes, you know, keep it down in there when you were trying to like break the door down from the inside out and then they're like, come in and say that to me like a man and then the Imperial replies, but you're not a man, are you? And then just you as a player going, oh, that bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Like, seeing your actual engagement with the game was so good, and it, obviously for me and you, that was one of our first proper interactions really, like, I think we'd maybe met once maybe before, um, mm -hmm. like in person at that point, but... Uh, um, yeah, briefly at uh, a movie, I don't yeah, believe like, it might have been or something along the lines, um, if it must have been a movie, I would have been doing a thing. it was the Princess thing, Bride or some shit we watched, um, to be honest, but it was, um, it was good, um, and obviously we just saw Andar grow through that game, um... And obviously, you were kind of thrown in the middle of the clusterfuck that became the 14th icon of, oh god, why is the world at stake um, in that game? And kind of going from a more personal story from Star Wars into the, you know... Yeah, a deliberately background story, but, mm. um, yeah, wouldn't do that one again. Wouldn't what do one? the 
the timid or character the again a bit know. on <laughs> i mean i would play an on character but i wouldn't play him as timid as he was i liked him a lot actually i thought yeah. he was good fun it'd be in your fucking face like a lot more <laughs> like, yeah, like, to play an on again. like call me me and could spoke about like the challenges of orn as a character being thrown in the middle of a game because yeah. given the depth the 14th icon took straight away um like being 20 sessions in and being going cool here's a druid by the way I'm um, just literally handed to you guys by the authorities, yeah. Who wasn't specifically there of his own choices either, right? It was kind of like, be here and then, you know, your mum will be released safely. Dot, dot, dot. Um, yeah. Pretty, Through the dark age. Pretty. Stag. Yeah. Pretty dark. Um, but yeah, no, like, ah. hopefully, obviously, at least you've, you weren't so shocked or out of your debts when obviously the, the game of Starfinder developed the way it did. Um, mm -hmm. Because we've done your catch-up now, so we're, we'll jump back to our review. We've just been kind of chatting about what's happened so far, and then we'll chat about what we expect to happen coming up, and then this can be our nice reminder when we go back and do the post-game mm -hmm. chat. So yeah, I think if we were at the point where we'd all remembered flashlights exist, and hmm. that was an interesting yes. way off. I remember um, when my friend Nick, hello Nick, by the way, um, who had uh, Hi, Nick. Who'd started watching along uh, with the game, who, I mean, I'm just going to shame him now, he stopped just before the end of episode 10. He got halfway through episode 10. Wow. Uh, session 10 Doctors and Dragons. And we all know the ending of that one was glorious and really, like, pretty much kick-started the catapult of the story into madness. Um <laughs> And yeah, like literally, I was like, you stopped just before all the madness took effect. Ugh. So, uh, hopefully, we went off the deep end. Yeah, hopefully, it'll pick up again. That'd be nice. But if it doesn't, here's the the quicker version here with us now. Um, but yeah, he'd asked me. So, do you just go back and undo that? Like, what do you re-record the session? Like, what happens? And I just explained to him, like, no, that's not really how RP works because he'd never played RP before. And it was just a case of, no, no we, we actually just continue like it never happened. And he's like, oh, you can just do that, I guess. No. Happily, we're all nerds and are familiar and com comfortable with the idea of a retcon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, as far as I'm concerned, like, that was a perfectly competent scene we all had. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, well, that was helpful, I think, pretty much when Alice turns up with guns in the corridor, right? Um, yeah, that was unknown. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, like she maybe she has more control over the facility than this giant oh. AI. Yeah. Did you um while I was away another comparison and I wonder if maybe Alex has made this I forgot at the time. It was very Bioshock. I haven't made that no. Alright, okay, yeah. And you just um, reminded me when you mentioned the gun turrets. Mm -hmm. okay. That was definitely a very Bioshock moment and um and thematically wasn't a million miles from it either, um, but yeah. definitely that atmospheric thing. You could see Resi, you could see Bioshock, maybe you can see like like um yeah, like facility in some kind of decay, right? And yeah. somewhat yeah. undermanned mm -hmm. for what you would expect. Yeah, the isolation vibe to it as well. Um, like you might meet people, but they're not quite people. Whether that be because they're on super drugs or they're zombies or they're gelatin. Yeah, I mean. Plasmoid. Some, someday you bump into a plasmoid, sometimes a plasmoid bumps into you. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sometimes the door is merely Not my finest way. moment. But yeah. Um, and then, yeah, like, you proceed through the facility, you obviously then start to talk to Alice more, and then she's like, yeah, so I would like to leave the facility. It seems to be losing power, which means she'll cease to exist, right? She'll power off. She didn't seem too keen on that. Um, mm. Yeah, she'd also yeah. locked the hangar doors, I believe, as well. Um, yeah, I wasn't best place. I wouldn't want to power off, though. That's what I like, Norman. <laughs> Is this <laughs> the darker side coming out now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for a while now, it's, yeah. Most beautiful words in the English language. Hangar door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> That should have been ah. our session title, yeah. Hangar door. Um, but yeah, like, I think... I'm a born namer. The further you get into the facility as well, you then kind of discover the stranger kind of concentration of these plasmoid entities left over. Uh, Emlyn has now obviously mind-linked with 
probably more than she should have and has learned that they seem to contain like flashes of what seemed like staff, right? Some were security guards, some weren't. Um, I think Lyco even ended up with a guard on top of him at one point. That then, like, yep, just before he um, went. Um, very odd. Very. You're covered in goo a lot, to be honest. Um, I took it well. Yeah. I did. I, did. I watched Nickelodeon when I was younger. Yeah, and then you just had the, the idea that, right, okay, we've got like the the projects that this facility is working on, and we've got Operation Retrieve Alice. Um, and you had like the core where Alice was kept that she appeared in front of and was like, yeah, don't go in here. Like, I don't really trust you guys enough yet, so let's try and trust each other. Go down this way to the outer lab ring and we'll see what happens. So you just obviously headed that way and it got to the point where you could go left or right because you were kind of like, where's all the vibrations and shakes coming from from the, the space station as it started to like shudder more and more violently as you were making your way through it. And then Alice appears and goes, right, my turn to trust you guys. If you go to my left or your right, that's where the source of all the shaking's coming from. But if you go to my right and your left, that's where the mobile like power unit, the data pad thing that she was wanting used to retrieve. Um, data storage unit, that was it. Um, so it's like, this is me trusting you guys now. Pick what direction you'll go, you know, and she'll support it. And obviously, for some reason, you trusted her, right? Um, I, did, I did not believe her that she would let us choose at that stage. <laughs> I'll be honest. I thought. <laughs> and that's the, the thing, right? If we, like, like if you if we redid it, what would have happened, right? Like if you said went towards the source of the shaking instead of the mobile unit, right? Because what an interesting mm -hmm. kind of game that could have been. It could have been so different had she turned out more sinister, right? Um, but the good thing is, at this point, you really didn't know, right? Like, I mean, I don't know. Hey, she could yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yeah, right? I mean, Alice yeah. is still in a, a weird... Yeah. Still technical and all nothing really about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, you then went off, you worked your way through all the labs, there were more plasmoid things, Emlyn got her cup of prophecy, um, the universe's best dad mug. Um, <laughs> God, yeah. Is, that was depressing. So good. I I loved it. Yeah, that was yeah. that was that now has pride of place in the kitchen, which I love. I Actually, really love um, thing and a real entity. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you said Nico with something earlier about you know Orn's dark backstory and all that. I mentioned it just reminded me there that I felt this this game was actually quite dark compared to you know in terms of like who I was playing. I felt like I was playing a character who had some obvious ostensible similarities but was actually kind of a darker character and we were all kind of ridden with doubt and uncertainties and yada yada so i'd kind of felt this game despite having a bit more of a surface level kind of bumpiness joy to a sort of sense of bubbliness almost mm -hmm. um that I, I i'd felt that like we're all quite dark characters now obviously orn we're not going to waste time going into massive depth about it but orn had a dark backstory but do you feel that Zora isn't particularly dark, or do you just feel like maybe is? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm curious to think. It probably totally how you find this was comparison. very dark. It probably was very dark. They probably can be very dark, but I think it probably tries to jovially not be dark. Like, <laughs> yeah, he, he's sort of run away, run away, not run away, but he's left that one. He's like a retired old man. Essentially. Like, like... like the way I look at it is like a granddad that served in the war, right? Like mm -hmm. yeah, knows exactly. like knows what he's capable of but doesn't want to terrify his grandkid, right? Um... Zig. Oh! oh I am your grandfather. Yeah. So I've just realized no! he would play you in a film. It'd be fucking Eastwood, wouldn't it? <laughs> Can you imagine the amount of prosthetics you'd have to put on him and I would love it? Oh man, it'd be so good. Like, I don't know, I think I'd rather have Mike Myers doing an Eastwood impression for Zora. <laughs> I think okay, it would fit yeah. better. Um, yeah. It would be like props to Mike Myers' yeah, actual acting talent. Um, but yeah, like, uh, what about, Nico, what's your thoughts on what we've obviously just discussed? Because it's not as to describe your character, really. Nico, that's your Is he muted? 
Yeah, probably. Why am I muted? It's just <laughs> we're used to it. Like, what, yeah, who would do that? Obsession? Again, he's responded perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, take, talk us through what you said, then. Talk us through. Right. <laughs> Basically, you said what you said, right? I was, I was like, he's, he's essentially like an old man. Like, he's essentially just like a like a retired like old man. It's like exactly what you said. Like, he's for the war. Yeah, I feel like he has got like a dark background, but he, he tries to not act dark, and he can be dark. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, exactly, like. Yeah, That's being capable scared, like, of something and being defined like, by something are two different things. Yeah, mm. your dark backstory is a backstory, not your current story. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's been a big thing because a lot of people, when they design backstories, we spoke about this in general actually in the sketch up chat about mm. people having entirely built characters and yeah, people do write the story they want to play out a lot of the time, which is a faux pas. Um, yeah, I think like going forward as well, it does. I really enjoy delving into backstory with players when designing characters so I can write a story that matches it more, but I think I want to jump into a backstory list game at some point soon to see mm-hmm. if it affects A, what I write as a GM for them, and how they play, because I'd rather they show, don't tell more so. Um, see, any time we do, <coughs> right, it's been a year, and then like I'll say, cool, during that year, could I have done X? I'm like, right, cool, let's explore that. What does that mean for this scene? Talk us through it. That's the exact premise of that, right? Don't sit and discuss the 10 things you've done. Just tell us about the important bits when they come up in the actual story. Um, Because I feel like you're less trapped as a player Mm -hmm. if you can just say, a good example, the Star Wars system has a big paragraph on languages saying it's more interesting if you know the language that makes the most sense for the scene or don't know it if it makes more sense. So we had a scene in our Star Wars game where... Uh, Emma's character, uh, a, 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 a droid, a protocol droid that was like studying sand types. Um, she'd <laughs> yeah. been abandoned on a planet. I love that concept. So, it's so uh, good. Sinine absolutely. was glorious, right? And then, Sinine was amazing. And she um, she was trying to get into the good books of the, the core players of the game who were trying to get onto like this cruise ship. The co pilot of the, the ship was a, a Wookiee called Lily. And Obviously, none of the party decided none of them spoke Wookie, or at least none of them that were present spoke Wookie. And Sinine thought, "Oh, I'll I'll translate. Then it shows you how useful I am, and you'll take me along with you, and it's brilliant." But Emma decided that Sinine doesn't understand Wookie because she thought it'd be more interesting. And I went, "You know something? I'm so used to power gamers picking the how do I win option instead of the what's more fun." option and I went of course because she looked at me for almost approval and I went if you want that like go for it like that sounds hilarious so we had me RPing as Lily being like arr, 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 you know wookie noises and then we had uh, Emma being like are you not even, are you not even going to tell me even remotely what that was and I'm like no because you don't know and then she went <laughs> okay Lily welcomes you on board the ship so long as there's no nonsense and then he goes, oh yeah, okay, well, tell Lily, thank you, this, that, and the next thing, you know, what the player said. And then she goes, oh, okay. And then she'd just make random wiki noises back, and Lily would just look at her confused. And, because obviously she wasn't speaking wiki. But that entire interaction just came from that on-the-spot judgment call of, it's definitely something I don't speak. I would never have needed to speak wiki as a droid that's left <laughs> on a planet cataloging sand. Right? Hey, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm fact, fact-checking you. Yeah. There are three languages of Wookiees. Mm-hmm. Shiriwook, Thaikaran, and Zaxis. It's Star Wars. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so the, uh, just how dare you! <laughs> There's an example you gave me of someone doing this, not because they felt it made sense for the character, but I think just for the sake of being massively weird. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that example, Ryan? I don't know. This is already vague as it is. Yeah, go for it. T- talk us through it. The documents. Oh, yes. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yes! Um, You'll remember better than I, so I I, I, I love this. I, uh, no, go for it. No, like, go. I'll, I'll fill in well, the Well, so the gist of it, from what I recall, is you had various people... Was one of them a monk or something? What do you mean, sorry? Well, RP I... was in. It wasn't when I was in directly. I just heard about this through you and some of the people who were involved. Talk through the details of fill in the blanks. 
they were arguing over some important documents they found. Yeah, okay. No, and like... it's eventually resolved in a role. Uh-huh. And the person who gets it is like, right, looks at the documents and then says, now who can read? Yeah. So, <laughs> it was actually the person I spoke to you about uh, before we started recording, actually, Colin. Um, so my friend Lee from Dundee. Right, oh, yeah. Right, right. Lee from um, Dundee. Lee from Dundee. Don't know why uh, I did a Cricordia. This actually, so, so the backstory of this example, right, this story, oh, is um, my partner at the time, a man called David, had never RP'd before and had asked if I would do like a solo one-on-one RP with him. Uh, and he really was like, he was interested in the idea of being a kind of Witcher-style character, right, like a witch hunter type guy. And I thought, yeah, sure, cool. I'll design a world of course, because why use an existing one? Because it's me, right? <laughs> um, and then I then thought, what I'll in fact do is I'll ask some friends if they want to do a one-shot intro, because then it takes the pressure of him not ever having RP'd before, and he can see the levels of interactions of more experienced RP people. Um, but uh, we had a friend, Craig, at the time, he had been in my Marvel game, which was one of my first ever campaigns I'd done, so I knew he'd RP'd before and he was used to my style, and he hosted for us. Uh, his flatmate, uh, Rich, was also there, who has RP'd for years. Um, and, you know, he'll be a, a core part of the story in a second. Uh, <laughs> my friend Nick, who has been my previous GM, Alex's current GM uh, yes. as well, I. Uh, he was there. We had um, obviously d- the aforementioned David, uh, my friend Lee, and obviously I ran the game. I'm trying to think, I feel like there was someone else there. I feel I'm trying to work out. Was that it? No, that that was it. Um, so we had Witch Hunter David, who I can't remember the character he was playing. I can't remember the name, but Witch Hunter David. We had <laughs> Rich, Craig, and Nick, who were a family. They were the Disney family. And it was Sebastian, Ariel, and Meg Disney. Um, <laughs> yep, because I made pre-gen characters for them, so there was no faffing around. And then we had uh, Lee's character, which was a uh, brother Almond Rodo, um, who was from like the church. Uh, Rodo being Hodor backwards, of course. So, yeah. Fast forward to the point where Rich had been quite argumentative with. Lee. Lee being a bit of a social shrinking violet, sadly, was, you know, not being able to express fully, because he's very theatrical as a person, very out there, and um, it it was fun to watch him, like, be a bit sillier, because it meant it took the edge off David feeling a bit awkward, right? Because if people are being there big and boisterous and flamboyant, you know, I don't think I could have named more flamboyant people if I tried, right? Um, <laughs> you know... Like Craig, who enjoys del- delving into nonsense. Nick, who just by personality is rather flamboyant in himself, and when he has fun, it's very obvious. Um, Rich, again, the slightly uh, counterpoint to this story. And then Lee, the one who, as I said, he just hit the ground running with RP, he was actually fantastic at it. Um, and yeah, he was there to replace a missing priest of his order in a, a random local village. They went to the the actual church itself went inside and they were all there <coughs> debating Sorry. what to do and he'd got a big pile of documents and he's like right okay we'll look through these and we'll try and suss out what the priest was up to because he's wandered off and he's been obviously he's charged with protecting the town because priests were powerful in this world and um oh wait and uh like Sebastian Disney aka Rich's character was just being like no well, I'll take the documents and then there was this big thing about him having found the documents first and not wanting to give them to the guy who's now in charge of the church, Almondrodo. So you're like, okay, interesting. And then there, were, there was a bit of a, like, I wouldn't say a physical altercation, but there was a discussion about how to physically get the documents back. And I said, well, why don't you just talk it out, right? And we'll have a, some dice rolls or whatever. And it all worked out to the point where the priest got them back just through sheer, like, you know, charisma-based powers, um, because he's a priest, right? He's there to talk to people and get to know them. So he managed to convince Sebastian to relinquish control over them. And it was a wee bit tense on a player level, right? Because it was as if Rich Mm. was trying to be a bit awkward towards Lee, which I could definitely sense at the table. Whether that's true or not, I'll never know the inner machinations of Rich's thoughts. But 
it was a bit uncalled for. Maybe Rich didn't know he was maybe overstepping a little bit with him. But justly by the power of the dice, Lee got the documents for his character and then just hit out to the table. Now, who can read? As he turned to the group, celebrating his victory in full glory at not even been able to use the documents he'd just secured from. <laughs> Which, and I love it. I love that to bits because... My God, was it glorious to see somebody say, "No, but these. This is what my character's right is. These are mine. I'm the head of the church order here. These are the previous priests. They're mine. Stop stealing stuff." And then that player being out, you know, voted by dice, um, and then him still deciding though. Now who can read, right? Because yeah. he's not going to read them himself. Um, whether that meant he couldn't read, or whether that was just Lee making his character be funny that way. We'll never know, but I uh, it's yeah, <laughs> it's one of my favorite RP memories as well from running random one shots in the past. Um, yeah, I loved it because it's just done for the fun, yeah. and it's a good example of doing the exact opposite of power gaming. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. Like power gaming, I get the need to win, right? But you might have noticed that I tend to try and pick players when I'm building games um, that don't need to win because there's being mechanically elegant as a character build and then there's power gaming like me and uh, Alex had a, a very recent conversation about this very thing where he asked me about some game design uh, from building characters and what was my, my phrasing was it on a scale of one to broken what number is this yep. um, just to get the actual how broken mechanically is all this overlap or yep. is it okay um Ultimately, leading to me saying, "Well, change it if I don't like it," which is which is how I would play any of that. Yeah, yeah. Like, let your players try stuff out, and yeah, I really do stand by the the fun of the table, the you know physical or metaphorical table that you're playing mm -hmm. at, is more important than one person's fun, hundred percent. Yeah, because I, I actually posted it recently um, on my Facebook wall because it came up that the, the recent meme of a. Uh, Rick ripping off the wallpaper to reveal an unwanted truth beneath and it was the if it's what your character would do that's not a valid excuse for you know sacrificing the fun at the table like yeah it just isn't i can't remember the exact wording um i'll go look for it in a second but um i uh, posted something relevant to this you might remember hey it was a a green text thing um and it was a little story about a dwarven character doing something really dumb because, I don't know, he didn't like bad magic or whatever. And it ended up with him opening a MacGuffin, which he shouldn't have opened. Say it was like a bag of holding with something awful in it. And basically directly causing a TPK. Because mm -hmm. his character would do it. And then someone responded, and said, ah oh, yes, my character would do it. The Nuremberg defensive roleplay? Uh -huh. um, <laughs> which I think is it's horrible, yet yeah, very true. It's like yep. a non-excuse excuse. excuse. Um, but I, I, you know what? Yeah. There are times where I completely get it, and you have, and you feel like, how do I get my character to do what I need them to do for this not to be annoying for other people or what have you? Because sometimes there genuinely are conflicts, and you don't always know what the right choice is in terms of the fun at the table. So completely. It is a real issue sometimes, and I'm not going to write anyone off. I'm not going to say, you know, never do what your character do. Always do what you think is going to be most fun for people, because you don't always know what that is. Well, I mean, Colin, uh, well, like, like, look at how I would do a lot of these situations, right? Because, I mean, I think you and, obviously, Nico are the most experienced of me as a GM, right? So you should have, like, a wider scope of this question, but... Think of all the games you've been in with me, and think of the people that have suggested, even the ideas yourselves, What's my response to most of this stuff being right from a GM like whose priority is the fun of the game more than what a player wants, right? Can you recall a time where I've ever had a an out and out just no to something? No, game? you're you're not a knower. You're you're you you may occasionally be are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um also Nico, you are muted this whole time. Um just so sure. Um, um but, but like it's it is a legitimate uh, thing that can come up sometimes where it's like why would my character go along with this? Mm -hmm. And that is that is completely understandable. Sometimes it is not the end of the world. But I do agree that obviously 
it's a cooperative. And by the way, uh, we were talking about balance a second ago, and I want to take an opportunity to say, anyone listening, for instance, like, or just for ourselves, yeah. for our own reference, mm. to get it out there, I'm not really all that worried about the fact that Lyco is not really that powerful compared to you guys. Like, it doesn't bother me. Because... I'm not actually that concerned with my DPS meters. This isn't the next year. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And also, it's com- it's not competitive. Shout out to meters, not- just FYI. Meters? Yeah. Oh, God, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think we've generally meters. been really good at sharing the limelight, though, in that. To, yeah. Um, like, that there's definitely been fights where I feel like I've done nothing. Just but at least you've got wasted fall. ammo. Yeah, no, obviously, <laughs> I am nothing if not economical. Yeah, um, yeah I think, you know, because we've all got our different skills, languages, and just backstory, backgrounds and things that mean, you know, even if somebody's not necessarily the most powerful in a particular fight, they can still be the most useful in the next scene of getting yeah. us to where we need to and go. I do, I do try and keep, like, from my point of view, like, I'm aware I've got a game with very different types of approaches, <clears throat> right? You are all very individual people, and... I like to give you guys clearly defined moments, right? Like I try and say, right, cool, this is this is a next moment. What are you up to? What are you doing? Here's an awkward mm-hmm. moment in a corridor with Alice alone, right? I am um, or there's bits with Zig where it's like, Zig, when even are you in the timeline now? Right? So for me <laughs> as a GM, making sure players have specific spotlight moments or the opportunity to step in to scenes is as important to me as you guys pushing for a scene because it's all well and good having for example like Zora saying okay I do this I do this I do this I do this and then having like Lyco say nothing and I know we're all laughing because that would never happen but having wow. me I mean I am a talker <laughs> that's fair but like it works though right especially with the character you're playing specifically for Lyco right because Lyco is a skill monkey from a mechanical point of view and yeah he, he... like you're a skill monkey with the exploit of I will snipe you Right, that like, or if I'm up close, you didn't expect. It's worth pointing out as well. Like, obviously, you've talked about there's a balance of gameplay rather than just a balance of numbers. Like, how much are you getting to do, which is completely in the hands of the the group, the GM, and the players. Mm -hmm. You know, no no system can make you give limited time to your players if you don't want to. Um, and there's also like this this balance of what you can do in and out of combat. It's not just about, as I say, it's not just about having the high steeps. There's also the sneaky spooky that I really enjoy with Lyco. Like that for me is the main fun of him, is being the guy that rather than going to Conspiracy Craig to, you know, try and discover how to make a, a certain device, he's he's going to, to use it like as a tool and maybe spread a little disinformation while yeah. he's at it. That's great, and as I say, it doesn't really matter to me that someone else in the team can just nuke people. I don't need to be able to do that. If this were a race to the top of the meters, uh, meters. Um, hmm. <laughs> if, if you're listening at home, that's meters with a question mark after it. Um, <laughs> that would be upsetting to me. Mm-hmm. I would be like, oh... Oh, I just have stabbing people and shooting people, and these guys can, you know. Hello, have you heard of the sun? Did you know that radiation is bad for you? You do now. Um, that <laughs> would upset me. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't because it's not about that. It's not about. And I would say that actually, Thirteenth Age was a worse offender in that degree because it was supposed to be more balanced in that regard, yeah. and just wasn't. No, like I think... um, because. Our for good me, friend uh, Nico here just killed everything in the world, personally. Yeah, yeah. Like, unadulterated <laughs> fucking powerhouse that Orin was. It was, it was just unfair. It's like, I'm a druid, uh, I cast being a bear, tiger, wizard, lightning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that went. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally just have yes, a one Yes, you do. Congratulations. Yeah, you won the game. Well done. <laughs> 15th, 16th, and 17th icon confirmed. It was all the forms of Orin. Yeah, um, uh, that was. I, mean, I was like trying to keep up with what exactly Orn had shape shifted into at uh-huh. that moment was half the fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the mini game of what even is Orn right now. Yeah, but like that was a completely different type of imbalance. Oh, Tiger Bill, it was fine. We could all deal with it. But this game, it isn't that bad. 
No, but there, there definitely is imbalance in terms of raw power numeric. For me as a GM, like, looking at this system, the worry was you'd play a weapon, right? So mm. you look at like, like it's the same as D and D, right? I mean, it teaches you how to make a tabletop weapon, and yes, it does. It doesn't really teach you how to make a character, right? It's something D and D's kind of bad at. Um, Rule for backstory. Yeah, and obviously backstory and character development and character creation is one of my biggest like focuses, I guess, at the, the start of a game. Um, mostly try and get in the mind of the player as much as get them into the mind, like my mindset for what I want for the game. And having you guys all talk me through what you want for your characters, then us coming to like terms of what that means for the the kind of game and the crew, the it became very clear very quickly. You had all made like people first and foremost, which is why balance mechanically never matters, right? Because as you say. You know you're going to get enough, for lack of a better term, screen time, because you know you're a fully developed character, not just a right. We don't need MD shot at long distance, so Lyco's not important this scene, right? It, that's more of a D and D thing. We don't need the charisma primary, because how many times have I put you guys in situations in this game where it's not been a? It's like wow, who's the best person at diplomacy between us? That's never come up in this game, right? It's always been a. Right, Nyx fixes broken things. Then Zig talks to us about the sun and kills androids. And then you've got <laughs> Zora tries to captain Yeah, he this sort ship. of put himself in the situation rather than, well, who's going to roll for diplomatizing the queen? Yeah, and that's that's the thing I really enjoy because, I mean, like Zora does have decent charisma, right? Um, from what I recall, stat-wise. Mm-hmm. Whereas... Mm-hmm. Like, your interactions with the Queen were all, like, I don't know, I think the more recent interactions, if we skip to the end of our our session list, you're deliberately awkward with her in the sense that you don't know what to expect from her because your dealings with people so far haven't gone so smoothly. (laughs) Like, for a diplomat, you're very undiplomatic in a lot of places <laughs> mm. um, but you are also very reserved that, like you're, you will draw a line in the sand so to speak for yourself and be like when I step over this people might die like with Edgar when you were debriefing him about the Baskerville research station and he flicked his cigarette off you um, in fact no sorry it was after that it was after the escape limo scene yeah, and scene. flicked the the cigarette off your chest and you just looked at it and looked back up and we had that nice moment where everyone was like, okay what's gonna <laughs> happen? Are we rolling initiative? Um, and I think knowing Oof. what we know now, it's probably good you didn't. Right? Um, mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, I think I th- let's, oh sorry, go for it, Zig. No, no, I was just gonna say, I think that it comes to like, we've been very good at like the stats don't dictate the characters mm-hmm. um, That's important. um and it's it's something that you know like I, everyone does fall into in you know you know D and the games i've definitely played in where everyone's like i am just i am numbers i am not a a person i am not a person i am i am strength 18 that is what i am yeah here <laughs> yeah i'm the strongest level one paladin yeah I hear you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count. No. <laughs> but yeah, I think, the, I think the... For me, that's always going to be more important, right? Like, even if I take into account pretty much any game I've ever played in, I think, any game I've ran, sorry, not played in, but any game I've ran, my focus hasn't been, are your numbers the best numbers they can be? I will always step into someone's character creation and say, if you build it this way, this won't work as well as it should. If you did this option, it would work better. But if you wanted it to work this way, this is what you do. Like, like for example, if you're picking a certain race, um, like in Star Wars, if you're picking a Keldor or a Zabrak, it's like, what's what's the purpose? What's the journey for this character? Are the stats going to suit the journey more? Or is it more about Can overcoming... Darth Maul? Yeah, or is it overcoming the lack of the stats that you want, right? Like, are you not that good at running and jumping over buildings like a Jedi can. Is that why you bought a jetpack, right? So, 
th it makes a more interesting journey of how you solve your your character flaws and the character flaws are pretty much what make the characters more interesting anyway because it's what gets you into trouble it's what mm. gets you into more interesting conversations it's what gets you to think about your character more because knowing your guy can punch through concrete is fine you know you're going to solve most concrete problems but understanding why you punch through concrete is the <laughs> real goal you know uh back onto a review though uh yeah so back to the point where he's got to the the housing unit for alice right if you just cast your minds all the way back and Ooh. yeah do 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 you're welcome uh, I should be better at this than I am. Yeah, I was gonna say, can we get some harp <laughs> noises, please? Here, but um, like <laughs> and yeah, like we had that the first proper introduction of, like, I guess time jank is what we've been calling it throughout the game. Um, remember, you just went into the room and there was the guards that were there, um, where the the armor was housed. Yeah. I don't know if Nico is still muted. Yeah, the the bit of like time jank with a uh, science man and the guards. The guards. We had to be. Oh, I took him hostage briefly, didn't I? Yeah. We did a fight. Mm -hmm. Did. I got my first plasma cannon shot. Yup. Laser cannon at that time, sorry. And then. Um, I did a laser. Yeah, it was your big artillery laser. Um, yeah, I miss that. I mean, it also missed as well, so that's fine. Um, yeah. But then, yeah, like, so he's got there, he's got that. There's a bit of weird temporal jank where they were there and then they weren't there and they were dead. and It's all very confusing. And then he's got this big sort of experimental power armor that Nix5 was like, okay, cool, now hook it up to the computer for Alice. As she's downloaded her into it. Because that made sense. It was smart. Like, what was, was... Nix Five say? Uh, like, take on Nix. Obviously, I know we've chatted about it in our post game chat, most likely back in the day. But uh... oh no, I'm going to say stuff that contradicts all that. Yeah, go for it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what did I? Because there was the moment where he's opened up the suit, plugged all the cables into the back of the neck of it, and then she opened up her programming code to you. And then mm -hmm. that was like her big moment of vulnerability, right? Because at that point, you could have done anything to her code. Yeah. I think there's a lot of other characters I've played that would have, you know, taken that opportunity, been a little bit, you know, I, I tend towards the chaotic neutral or you know, sometimes even the neutral evil in a lot of characters. Chaotic bastard. Uh, it's fine. You can see it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> awful neutral. Yeah. Um, awful neutral. <laughs> Oh, how I've played those characters, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that opportunity to, hey, I could make this useful to me. Um, but no, Nyx is not that. Um, and I think in that sense, it's a... Uh, there's also an, an empathy there, a reflection that, you know, this this is a, a weird AI, but it's you know not... It's, it's closer to me. Almost in a mirror darkly, right? Like, that was, for me, it was mm -hmm. the, I could be this at some point, right? Yeah. Or I might have been this at some point. The This is it, you know, Alice's mm -hmm. chance for at least a basic step of evolution, right? Yeah. Moving from the kind of digital world into the, uh, the physical yeah. world. I won't be as bad as they were to me kind of moment. Yeah, exactly. Um, in the Android political decisions. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I think it's, yeah. Although he had his major suspicions about Alice. Um, yeah, it was kind of stuck between his desire to help the AI versus Crippling curiosity. his general... <laughs> uh, yeah, there's that too. But there's also the um, disdain for Aspis and the kind of... Yeah, yeah like this overall that... shady situation he's wearing for this kind of collapsing yeah. station because there was a kind of on-the-clock vibe to it as well. Of, yeah. you just don't really know how long you have before this thing like vibrates itself apart, right? Because yeah. remember the, the shudders and the tremors were getting worse, the concentration of plasmoids was worse, you know, the patience of your captain was getting worse, you know, all these things. <laughs> patience is always at that like <laughs> that nice edge, man. <laughs> Doshko's edge. Um, <laughs> but yeah, then you managed Freezer's to go. Edge. 
you just managed to get yourselves back to the other way, and then you just went to the big kind of uh, like the specialist lab, I think, shall we say? I can't remember what I called it at the time, but where all the vibration tremors were coming from. And we had our wonderful, as you mentioned, your artillery laser cannon just missing the giant door in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah gosh, you which that. we realize you fire and it just it wasn't fully Doesn't charged. Not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's my one out of combat skill. Blows. Yep. 100%. Yep. No <laughs> door. <laughs> Stand in the way of Zora. <laughs> oh, Zora's life is an open door, right? <laughs> um, yeah, because we had you... At that point, you decided to run back to the ship to be like, let me try and secure the ship while these guys... like, Let's prep the ship so it's ready to go while they guys investigate. The, really, why... Emelyn didn't go back, we'll never know, but I think it's purely the strength required to get there quickest, right? Um, I think you pretty much had to, like, absolute athletic role pelt it down there. I mean, yeah. Ev Evelyn, I was about to say, Emelyn um, is, was getting, like, mind pelted left and right at that point, as you know, as yeah. well. But she, she was, like, she'd been, She'd already been attacked by one of the plasmoids, so she got too close to yeah. it as well, so yeah, she wasn't doing so good with the psychic pressure, yeah. Um, but yeah, then obviously you guys got underneath the big lab door thing that, like, Alice helped hold up um, with her newly found power armor suit that she had, kind of clunking about. And that's when you met our favorite NPC, right? The purple cocoon. Uh, yeah. Uh. yeah. The purpoon. <laughs> Wonderful. Urgalas. And then things got weird. Isn't that Big right? Big as we call him. We yeah. don't. I appreciate him, quite frankly. <laughs> yeah, can we get a thumbs, a hands up, a, a, a show of hands? Faces up for the Big <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did I talk of some weirds Dave. that you experienced in as Lyco in that? <laughs> particular part of the game because there was a lot of weird so that there. obviously like had a bit of a, a, an unusual experience later and uh, mm. that, that up, yeah. sort of colours my remembering of events but as I remember at the time I was sort of being spooked out while being spooky in an event um, mm -hmm. and there was a sense of there being a presence mm -hmm. and that was the first hint of something that would occur much later which do you think I should talk about that now or yeah, should go for it because it's going to It'll probably. I don't think we're getting through all of the episodes in nah. this one set. We're going yeah. to we're gonna have to bridge a lot more of this a lot quicker. <laughs> so what would happen later was is that a uh, bone siege, mm -hmm. Cindy L would beige, <laughs> beige uh, would would uh, time warp <laughs> us yes. back to the place, uh, the Abs not Absalom Station, Baskerville. Yep research hole um, mm -hmm. and we would go through that experiencing it in a kind of weird timey wimey way to use the, the current parlance um, in which we'd sort of see an alternate version of events almost whereby he was causing them to the, the plasmoids that is to you know pop mm -hmm. is um, almost studying them and we would also find that that presence was probably him Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because that would imply it was also probably me. Yep. Uh, and so you get this little hint of... This was about session 19, there, I think. This is sort of events have been set in motion here. Yeah, because like, back where we were talking, like the session 4 is what we're talking about there, and it was it's just a jump to the left. And then if yeah. you go all the way to session 19, where this... Oh god, we did happened, <laughs> And then a step to the right. So yes, it's very time warpy. Um, again, as a point, a GM note here, very proud. Not gonna lie, very proud of our like story interactions being able to sync up nicely like that. Um, being able to tell more to the story for you, like specifically with your journey with Sindile, the Bone Sage from Knox. Yeah. Like having you experience that. Again, early session stuff from a here's kind of an explanation as to all the weird stuff you specifically noticed, like when you climb to the top of ladders and seeing f like feet as you yeah. look up. But when you look up, there's nothing. nothing. Or seeing like yeah. shadows like moving around in the corners of rooms and stuff. Um, even on like the ship, 
seeing weird entities like staring at you, um, or leaving a room and there's being a presence behind. There's been a lot of weird stuff happening. Yeah. Um, and it did seem to be accounted for in that session 19. Um, yes. Which was for me, it was a lot of fun. They like almost closed that loop in a way, um, which was kind of nice. Also, just kind of like lets you know how unstuck in time like Bone Sages, or at least Sindile was, right? Because uh, in a couple of sessions later, session 25, um, you got a very reasonable explanation of how Sindile looks at time. If you remember when you were standing on Absalom Station and Cinder, yeah, died, well, at least we got like a straw and a cup. explanation. Yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily so one that's. Uh... Well, it was Cinder's explanation, right? And it was a case of, yes, you look at time this way, and time for me is this way. And then that was as much as you really got, quite frankly. Yeah. yeah. I enjoyed Cinder. Cinder was a fucking great character. Um, it's a shame that the same sessions pretty much when Sindel steps out of the story, sadly, uh, back up at session 25. Um, but yeah, like, pretty much the birth of Urgalas, or the rebirth of Urgalas happens, I guess. Uh, Urgalas. As the uh, the cocoon opens up, uh, we have pressure and a wormhole situation, uh, since the captain a has... a wormhole situation. Well, I mean, yeah, Nico, do you want to talk us through what you you, you witnessed when you got back to the ship? <laughs> <laughs> What 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 particular point was the wormhole situation again? It's when you went back to the ship to warm up, but then the cargo hold had been opened. Ah oh, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> that's right. And the the box was open. Yeah, the crate you were supposed to deliver. Yeah. And there was a clip. Yeah, and that, a clip. And ooze, a very stargate absorbing clip. <laughs> sort of for as a wormhole situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> don't watch too many TV shows, kids. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't talk to the kids like that. This video is marked don't not watch too many for kids. kids TV shows. Um, but yeah, I think um, there were some interesting interactions between the captain on the ship trying to yes. reactivate the ship and uh, the crew dealing with psychic jank overload in the, the lab. Yeah. It was... Remember the. The, the, the glips spinning out a grenade and we jumping for cover. Yeah, no, <laughs> oh, like, like nothing happening. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's the pins in it. Okay. Uh -huh. Yup. Uh, it also then spat but it felt very for... fitting, nonetheless. Yeah, and it, like, it spat that infrared generator as well. The, um, like, it, it was a, you know, it overheard people talking about how they couldn't see the dark, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. The gloop going on to be named Ivan so far. Um, yes. I think yeah. the clip being actually an ooze that creates things. From... Yeah, the assembly ooze that he in fact was. I love how the effort to get it off the ship and then the quick decision to be like, maybe we, maybe we put it back on the ship. Maybe we take it with us. Um, <sighs> We're going back for Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> we will storm... I forgot the name of the plan versus. again. Versus. We will storm versus. Oh, yeah, we will so versus, versus. Let's do like... What we'll do is we'll try and do the equivalent of like a, maybe a five minute per chapter chat then, shall we? Um, so that was pretty much the end of chapter one. You guys sailing away from uh, the station with Ivan, King of the Ooze, and also <laughs> uh, Alice, Queen of the Power Armor, um, mm. as you all leave Basketball Research Station behind. Um, she had signed off on the delivery and she, she said that was agreeable so long as she got passage off. The station, which meant you'd get paid for the clusterfuck. Um, and then that leads you nice into chapter two, Resonance, where you uh, open with Drift and Spin, where you are invited to mm. a debriefing with one Edgar Wesland, and then you calm, you get your email list from Zig going, where are you, 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 I'm here. Bombarding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh. Yeah. The, obviously, the spin becomes sort of a, a thing a couple of times. Mm -hmm. We we find out why its name is such, don't we? Is is that or is that later? It depends. What do you mean? Like you can talk about it now. Oh, because spin is, is the, referred to because of the sort of the sensation of it, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yep. But is it? Do we have it? Do I? I know I do at one point. 
I, I think yeah, like I, Emily drinks some. Emily does, yeah, yeah. as well. Um, because he offers his cup, a couple of us a drink and a cigarette at one point. Yeah, and it was like so much per bottle, like it was a ridiculous yeah. amount per bottle. Um, I have a note somewhere because the actual number per glass was really important. one moon. Yeah, like I now, like just to reveal that now, it was something like six 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 related. I'm sure, um, because obviously there was a lot of like sulfur type descriptions to it that I was putting to it because there was very much a this guy's a demon vibe using yeah. giving him. Um, so I think it was six glasses I think you could get out of one bottle and whatever let's see, I'll get the exact price just now uh, so 3,996 uh, credits is what like a bottle cost because that is 666 per glass that's why I made it that <laughs> and that was just brought up in there, it was just a random throwaway fun thing for me so there's a wee easter egg for you guys from way back then i hadn't even realized that because i'm not very quick with many arithmetic. it's not so i don't imagine people would be like all right okay or um, any arithmetic yeah. to be honest but yeah. but yeah so yeah the drift and spin came up and that's that was you was getting to experience the drift travel uh you did some reading up on languages etc and i think alice during mm -hmm. that journey had said by the way that was like kind of eoxian kind of elibrian and then that led everybody to start studying eoxian as a language um yeah, you just go, you just have your first real interaction with your, your handler, right? Like your your paycheck man, Mr. Edgar yeah. Westland. And that, yeah, I don't know, like, you, you can go from here, Zara, go for it, because I know you, you love Edgar. It's a douchebag. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> it's also Zeg likes him more. <laughs> I think that is true now, right? Like you probably do. It's true now, yeah. Um maybe not so then. Um I think I think at that point Zig was definitely more um I only have to deal with this person because the captain has to deal with this person. Mm -hmm. At that point I just told him ninety five percent of the truth that happened in chapter one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not a five percent of the truth was without. Yeah, that was mostly Alice. And Urgalas, as we later revealed, because um, I think he's got the name. I think Alice was able to give you the name way early on. I think he's had that. Um, he just didn't know what it meant at that point in time. But yeah, then we've got Mystery Shopper, where I think we got introduced to Old Man Guns, as well. Yeah, yep. we've got a bit more about just the Not general day to day of Absalom Station, really. Um, like the nice like plaza living of the main level. Uh, where all the, the rich hustle of bustle. And then the the kind of the underbelly where everything's a bit more like kind of bizarre style market place and living on top of each other in back alley bars and stuff. Um the stuff like was probably more used to dealing with. Yeah. Same with a uh, Nick's five. And if I recall I got to do a bit of yeah, yeah, because of the luck. Uh-huh. Because mm -hmm. did it did not make like profession roles or something to lurk about and get information? Yeah, you definitely did. Um because we had you guys wandering around, um, pretty much it was talking. a bit um some of it was like a bit you know what's the term i'm looking for we did we did a lot of it in 13th where we'd have like the like montages montaging yeah mm -hmm. there it was a bit like some of it was it wasn't necessarily given detail with absolute information but absolutely everything but you were getting the sense of what was going on as I recall, I really should go back and listen to this. <laughs> but there's so much of it, right? There, there, there's so that, much. That's so why we're doing this, right? This is yes. uh, if somebody wants to just jump in, they can for the finale. And, one, right? and yeah, sort of. It was it was an opportunity to get back in the station and introduce, uh, because obviously we'd begun <clears throat> in medias res on a mission. <laughs> Not yep. quite actually, but close. But uh, we hadn't uh, we hadn't sort of met up at a tavern beforehand or something. Uh -huh as the traditional fantasy trope would go. But what we were doing was, like, we were meeting the characters while they were going about their daily work, but we didn't get a sense of their background. And so what I was doing there, which is quite funny, is, like, here, here is Lyco without the crew. This is the guy. You've met him as part of this group. Here's a little bit about who he is outside of that. And I always think that's a really fun thing to be able to do, to give you a sense that here's Lyco... He's someone who knows people on both sides of the law. 
He's he's been a lawman. He has these skills, and he's a bit. You know, he's he's a little bit shady. Yeah, <laughs> like he's not necessarily a bad dude. He, you're he's a results guy. That's here. what the yeah. way I've looked at. Like Lyco will. He's the PI, right? The guy that doesn't mind yes. not following the law if it gets the greater good out of it. Lyco is very much. Um, he's very noir. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. very much influenced by the fact that I I do like detective fiction. Hopefully, as well. Like for me, obviously, having to then like address different genre requirements for a game, right? Like I hope that that journey has came through for him so far because I've definitely tried to give him the more noir style. Yeah, there's story. been a decent, there's been a um, decent bit of it, and you know, we, we we even had sort of a little a little hint of internal cop politics mm-hmm. um, with Babak. Yep, come out of uh, and obviously, Babak was happy to use someone who was familiar with the with the steward's ways, mm-hmm. but not necessarily super eager to trust them as much as he would the have rules. to later. Yeah, like somebody can op- operate in yeah. the shadows, as it were. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, but also it's like there was also that sense of I mm, do I want to trust you this much? Well, it looks like I have to because you're the only one of my uh, uh, differently living uh, yeah sort of associates. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Deathly challenged. Deathly uh, <laughs> challenged. Yeah, yeah. whatever else. Like, can we have some some Zig Nix Five and uh, Zora input on that particular aspect of the game as well? Because we definitely have had a lot of people get their own little moment to go off and show. Because, like, I started the game with here's the group working as a group, right? That was the station, and mm. then we got little bits of you guys individually. Then we got here's what you guys do kind of individually pretty quickly mm. which was maybe tough for zig right as an introduction to the game at that point definitely sure like um, you don't really get the crux of the group uh, or crutch sorry of the group both crux and crutch i guess work um yeah um but no at the same time it's also been really key to zig's development especially recently mm-hmm. um it's kind of fueled that disconnect from the group okay um, it's sort of been your big over where oh, blah, 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 <laughs> over. Uh, I'm so bad at words, but okay, you know okay. the, the 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 arc that has followed you from beginning to end has been like you have had this thing before. You've sort of come to us, and you've got this thing now where you're not hundred percent certain of your place. Um, you are that little bit apart from the group. But I think the thing that maybe Zig doesn't realise is that we kind of all are to an extent. Yeah, but I think it's perfect for his immaturity, right, in that sense. And I mean that in the pure uh-huh. sense of Zig still only sees as far as what affects Zig that way. Where's it, why do I feel left out? Where's my place in the crew? Why does everybody treat me like a kid? When, as you say, like Colin, like, all the characters are in that boat, right? Um, yeah, to a greater or lesser extent, we really all are. Which is great because it does make sense, right? Everybody else gets on with it, right? Lyco goes, right, okay, there's a lot going on. I'll pick the tasks I can focus on and then put it on my ma- my board, right? And then you've got Zora that goes, okay, a lot's going on. Who am I killing? Or who are we, who are we avoiding <laughs> war with this week? Um, and then you've got next five, which is, I don't want to deal with this. What can I build or fix <laughs> to not to deal with that problem that is possibly our fault are we war criminals um yep. yeah um i think we might be so like having you guys go off and do individual stuff even briefly with the mystery shopper episode was really good um we then lead into like my particular one of my favorites to be honest welcome home is one of my favorites which was our emil and heavy session um oh yes yeah. And for everyone, that's the one where after Old Man Guns's like shop, she wandered off and got lost from a Lyco who wandered off, obviously deliberately and didn't specifically keep track of Emlyn. And <laughs> she found herself in a random apartment, and then things were just oddly familiar yet clearly new and strange and alien to her. And she wanders around this this stranger's. And this would be the origin, or at least the first. Appearance of Head Edgar. 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 Yes. Edgar. Ed- Edgar. Um, yeah. So, like, she ends up there, but then, yeah, 
at that point in time, it seems like Edgar was there waiting for her. Like, she wanders through the house, she looks around, she gets some really spooky stuff with mirrors when she's looking at the mirror, and she's seeing herself in her home while knowing somebody that's not meant to be there is in her home. Um, which was good, I think, as well, because poor Olka, being in the house herself at the time, during that particular session. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Spooking her. I think it was maybe a bit too mm. real. Yeah, so I definitely apologise to... Uh, Olka for having that particular uh, realism hit, I guess. the Okay, well, I'm in myself. Can you stop making my character be alone and freaked out so that I'm not alone and freaked out, please? Uh, but she played it fantastically. <laughs> she reacted to everything I wanted her to. It let us develop her weird psychic residual kind of stuff from the the space station with the mug and everything. She recognised the pictures on the uh, like the fridge, the like the kind of LCD covered fridge that had like the family pictures of like the mum, the dad, and the kid. She went to like the kids' room and saw that there was like a half built rocket that she knew she was supposed to finish with the kid. Um, really kind of weird, just residual memories, really. And then she heads down into the, the kitchen because she hears like the kettle click. And yeah, Edgar Weslin's there. Or at least at the time you thought Edgar Weslin was there. Until mm. uh, much later when you questioned him on this, he's like, yeah, that wasn't, that, I was never there. I am. Um, how much he's believed that is always uh, interesting. But Emily and him entered into an agreement where she would accept Edgar's psychic passenger, shall we say. Uh, and that, then that obviously went places, quite frankly. Yeah, as we, we discovered slowly through time. It's one of those things where you've got that interesting point of like, what does he benefit from lying to us about this, if we already know it? Yeah, right. Um, especially like much later when you did confront him um, when he was on the ship it was a case of like yeah, so that was quite interesting he's like, what, what? and unfortunately we'll probably never really know well we might, you we might, know. we shall see you never know, it depends what if you ever speak to Urgalas, right um, it's like, well we understand him now, there? right so yeah, right um, I, I think after that we had everybody back on the ship and then Alice's interesting interaction with the golden D20, um, where she fucking rainbow warps you guys to a cave full <coughs> of dragons. So yeah. Oh, what a nuisance. Yeah, right. So we had our interactions with right. that. We then had uh, Speak Plainly, which is your agreement with Humani, the black dragon, to uh, go essentially deal with the, the drow queen, really since she seems to have robbed Himani quite a bit and left him kind of embarrassed as a dragon. Because in the big meeting place, I don't know if you just remember or not, but he was sat back in the dark, whereas the other ones were, like, forefront and very uh, much we are. I think at the dragons. time that... if I, 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 I'm not even... It's one of those things where I'm not even sure if I remember it or if now that you see it, I think I remember it. Mm -hmm. But I feel like... I may have written that off not so much as being like a oh my status has been lowered I am deeply shamed as so much as him of course he's he's the big uh -huh, the brooding yeah. sinister drag who larks mm -hmm. uh, which isn't really quite who he is actually he's a bit more in your face than that mm. he's very polite though because they will ask for permission to be on the ship when he enters right mm. um, even if it does seem like he's bound by formalities that way um not too dissimilar to your newest Droid Queen, quite frankly. Um, but yeah, we've also got... Right, so that was um, Speak Plainly and Void Transaction we had um, for those particular sessions, and that brings us to the end of Chapter 2. Chapter 3 is called Office Space, and it starts with Self-Destructive Tendencies. <laughs> Can you tell us about that, Nix 5? <laughs> this was my moment for Nix's diplomacy. Yes. This, um... <laughs> when he decided to take control of the negotiations mm -hmm. and find us some leverage it's when to... You, uh, it's when you find that you roll a C4 on a D20. You're like, wait, how? Yeah. <laughs> um, that was, yeah. Excuse me, I will be back momentarily. I'm going to go and check on the situation next door. And then came back in saying that I set up a bomb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, Hermione wasn't give... exactly a p polite to you, though, either. Um... He wasn't. He's a, he's a dick, basically. Yeah. Um, in short, Hermione is a racist, and he's arrogant, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. That probably covers it, really. Yeah. yeah. Not a good guy. 
Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I thought we needed to, you know, get something that we could use against him. Definitely. Uh, we then and, have uh, a... Was it Dance Puppet Dance comes up next? That's purely because of Charles Dance being cast to play Hamani. Yes. Um, we then have a Shops, Bots, and Autodox because you just work your way back to Absalom Station and uh, you just go to try and report in for obviously Aspis Consortium being like your point of contact primarily and Zora <laughs> this is the yes. sometimes the goblins win uh, up to the, where you and Emlyn <laughs> decide we'll go and we'll we'll go and deal with you know Edgar yeah, okay, Edgar so. for fucking about and Edgar places and all stuff because I'm pretty sure we'd go into that at that point and stuff. Yeah, I can't remember exactly what point I'm going to reveal this. I'm going to try to figure out what he's dealings with the Drow Queen were as well, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because there was definitely hints that he'd been involved with the Drow Queen uh, in some way Aspis and the Drow were involved with stealing stuff from Himani. And Himani wasn't happy about this because it embarrassed him as a dragon. And yeah, we then had Nyx and Zig go off to the lower spire, I think, at this point. Ah, uh, yes. And that was fun. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then um, Lyco went off to go talk to Shakos, um, his uh, cop buddy. And uh, they had like a, just a nice day in the park, quite frankly, um, together. And then we had obviously Zora and Emelyn heading up to go try and talk to Edgar. Tell us what you found when you went to his office. Uh, uh, fiends. <laughs> <laughs> Simply put, there were fiends everywhere. <laughs> yeah. The absolute monstrous demonic fiends that were shaped like goblins. <laughs> Some might just call them, especially by their stat blocks, goblins. Uh, fiends. <laughs> Oh dear. Of course I released them later. Of course. Uh-huh. Um But yeah, like you, you go into his office and it seems like Yeah, like I think you actually bullied your way into the office from what I remember because you weren't allowed in initially in the reception area. Where everybody was weirdly like that. like the equivalent of walking in everybody's like a white person in a suit. It was like only it was the non spec non generic earth racist and more space racist where it was just everybody was a human spacist when you walked in um to ask us so like the empire yeah and um yeah i think that was pretty grim quite frankly uh, he's bullied the receptionist i believe into letting you upstairs went upstairs and, yeah that you opened <laughs> the... like a slightly weird old man i was like oh god what the receptionist <laughs> Yeah, I, is that not? No, I think it was quite a youngish person. Yeah, um, youngish, right? I'm, I'm you must... used your celebrity hood, I think, um, to try and like, don't you know who I am? Uh, yeah. To get up there, and then I think you were like, "What would your boss say if he found out you were stopping me getting to see him?" Something like that. Um, I think I'll go back and listen to that myself, actually. It was some minor mm-hmm. lines. I'm pretty sure. Like, um, yeah. <laughs> Cue the elevator door ding. Opening up and just a bunch of goblins turning around. One of them on the bar, halfing, like half necking the the bottle of spin. S- several of them pulling an unconscious Edgar through a portal in the back of the room, and a bunch of them like throwing like hatchets and firing laser pistols at you and Emily. Yeah. Two like three Ryan crits in a row. <laughs> Why do you call them Ryan crits? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> They're just regular crits. It was. I mean, that was a glorious one. I loved it. <laughs> it was to see our, our our fearless leader, so flammable. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. Beat by goblins. And sometimes the goblins win, right? Sometimes the goblins win. Probably. A little bit of backstory in that name. I had recently read the book Mind Hunter, written by John <laughs> Douglas, who was one of the sort of formative figures, and then although. He jokes about the fact that he's the guy that took the BS out of it, which isn't true at all. But in the literal sense, he did take the behavioral sciences out of the name, but he's typically seen as like the behavioral science guy. Um, and he talks about, towards the end of the book, 
some of them are going to get away. And he refers to uh, one of those corny posters you would see up in a like a in like a little office cubicle wall. Not cubicle, like well, yeah, it is. You know what I mean? Like little segmented, something akin to you know a hang in there cat mm -hmm. that one of his colleagues had, which was it was like a little comic style drawing of like a knight, like looking and like I don't know, like with his pants pulled down or something, looking embarrassed and beaten, scurrying off while the dragon sits there looking smug, and it said, "Sometimes the dragon wins." And he used that as, an, as like an object lesson. It's like, just because you're the good guy doesn't mean you win. Mm -hmm. And that, I thought, applied nicely, sort of. But also, Dragon's a bit grand. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the goblin wins. I think is actually... Sometimes the goblins win. I, I, I genuinely am proud of because that. Because it's like the generic drops of an RP, right? Like, yeah. you fight rats in the basement or like goblins and you're expected to stomp it. And yeah, our war hero didn't, right? I like that, but so then close. it's what it led to, where you then take the elevator to the top floor, right? <laughs> yeah. You open up and that all went a beautiful, like, forest, right? Like a kind of jungle-style forest, big open plain of grass and whatnot, leading up to a desk, somebody sat behind the desk, and like a big waterfall and such behind them. Blood holes. Yeah, right? Uh, <laughs> and you step out there, and then you meet the CEO. M O Narakas. Yeah. And uh, then you turned down a moon. These things happen. Um yeah, I mean what that moon would have cost. <laughs> it's like my soul. Mm. Oh, it cost uh, you a war with the dry, right? That was what she wanted. I mean kinda had that already, but that was fine. Mm. So like all all directions pointed to uh, the draw <laughs> at this point since you were being offered left, right and centre chances to go after the draw queen yeah uh, what else happened so in the darks the session where pretty much Emma O explores inside Emmeline's head with her for a bit it's also where we have Nyx and Zig Enter the white space within Lorspire, I think. That might be also mm. sometimes the goblins yes. win as well. Um, because once Nyx is in the white space, he loses Zig through the pond, um, yep. like a pool of water. And then that's oh, where the, the in the dark comes from, where <laughs> Zig ends up with Edgar in like some weird, hot, dark, sweaty place. And then. Yes. You, really fleshy walls and ugh. yeah, and like you see him all beat up and done in, and as if he's been there for a while, and then uh, he's like, "Where is Zora?" And you're like, "Oh, okay." And that was like your initial reaction to like seeing him there, and he was like, "But I didn't want like where, where's the rest of them, right? Why is it just you?" And then <laughs> yeah, then you start glowing, and then you see him feeding off that. And you see him getting much, much better, and then he starts with his freaking rainbow blasts, leading you through dark, sweaty corridor after dark, sweaty corridor. What Friendship is magic. I was going to say, what do you remember from, from that <laughs> adventure, if much, Zig? Um, oh, jeez. Being chased by the Vault Guardians. Mostly. The Vault Guardians. Um, and then... Um, Obviously, bumping into the Radiant Supreme way later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, everything in between was basically trying to get out with Edgar and. Um, oh, that wind's getting exciting out there. Oh, yeah. Same. Uh, I hate weather. <laughs> I hate the weather. I really um, do, man. Carry on, no, sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. Mother Nature um, just sucks. Yeah, bring her down. <laughs> wow. It. I, for one, support our overlord, Mother Nature. Um, uh, yes. so you may yes. remember me from such films as me. Men vs. Nature and the Path to Victory. But yes, Zig, sorry, carry on. Yes. Uh, so from what I remember, I get dumped dumped down with, with um, Edgar in a less than um, wholesome state. 
Mm-hmm. And then obviously Zig's uh, glowing aura. Mm-hmm. Um, glora. Uh, helps yep. sort of <laughs> glora. Glora. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, Zig's Glora uh, seems to feed him somehow. Mm-hmm. And um, we end up running a lot. Mm-hmm. A lot, a lot. Yeah. An awful um, lot. Mm-hmm. An awful awesome, lot, a lot, a lot. An awful lot of running. An awful lot. That's fantastic. Carry on, Zig. An awful lot. Metal gear. And the, the Vault Guardians who are flipping scary as fuck, mm-hmm. by the way. Um, They're just as scared of you as you are of them. <laughs> I don't know if For some true. reason, some reason, I don't believe that. <laughs> Something tells me that's untrue. Welcome to Big's tours of the solar system. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, breaking into uh, a vault. It's been like this... they're more scared of you. Yeah, I don't think so. This yeah. is the Drow Vault Safari. <laughs> they will be when they discover how radiation sickness feels. I mean, yes, they should be. <laughs> mm-hmm. I actually typed in Vault uh, Guardian in the search to see if I could find it. That's what I called it. And I'm like, oh, why would that come up? Oh my god, carry on. And um, that's why I'm for quite a while running away from Vault Guardians, but... Um, mm-hmm. Eventually we come to, you know, a big ass sort of door type thing. Oh yes, an um, ass door. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean they kinda mm-hmm. were sphinctory, yep. weren't no, am I think of something else? You're thinking of later on, but it is the vault door. Yeah, are, yeah. Like, it's it's technically the same place well, it's very similar place anyway. It's very organic. Yes. It's a it was a, it's like a sphincter yes. door, yeah. You can say that. It's I mean, Geiger. You've got sphincters yeah. in your eyes as well, like yeah. This is For true. the sake of yeah. those listening at home hoping to plow right in to future <laughs> sessions, the aesthetic is very much Geiger. <laughs> there you go, you're welcome. Yeah, 100% Geiger. Yep. Plow away. And not the counter. <laughs> um, yeah, so we sat around and uh, Edgar, or at the time I wasn't sure if it was Edgar or Hedgar, we were kind of unclear mm-hmm. at that point. Uh, it was like, right, we need to get out of here. And I was like, ah. As Zig does. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I believe I. I think he put his amulet against the sphincter door. I feel like he did. Yeah. Probably. I think that seems to be Zig's answer to pretty much everything at this point. Why not uh, just use the amulet? Um, and he goes in, and then there's um, big old RS. Mm-hmm. The Green Supreme. Yep. Um, <coughs> stunning a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember if it's this point where he says it's awoken or awakened. No, not yet. No, is that way later? Yeah. I am begun. <laughs> this is the, oh, this is just so many instances. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it's hard to keep up with um, where we're at with the Radiant Supreme. Um, uh, and this is the. Oh, what was in it? Somebody help me, please. <laughs> no. <laughs> was was the was the pretty much egg in you there? Go in, you go into the vault, right? The radiant yes. supreme's there. Yes. And then it pretty or, much says, "This isn't when you're supposed to be." Pretty yes. much. And he sends you away through time and/or space. Yes, that's right. And you the beginning of the... your journey, as he seems to be like in the middle of like what seems to be an empty vault. Yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, and that's the beginning of the horrendous. When is Zig? Mm-hmm. Um, horrific story. I, mean, I feel like the um, Lord Spire started that journey for you, really. But maybe when you yeah. I mean, yes, it started, it, but it was yeah. the it was the beginning of the the realization. Mm-hmm. Of this horrendous. Part. Yeah, like this is when Ryan realized he was running five separate fucking timelines, and he was like, "Why have I done this to myself?" Because yes. when we have a that conversation when Zora is leaving without Emmeline, in fact, because Emmeline was assigned to Meng Po, the head of personnel for Aspis, because she stayed behind to learn about the Hedgar situation, um, and Zora had agreed not to take a moon as payment for starting a war with the Drug Queen. The yeah. 
the phone call conversation where Lyco was with uh, Sindel as Sindel was putting feathers from a cushion. <laughs> yeah, into that was his mane. Uh-huh. Yeah, you really, you really fucked yourself with that timeline. <laughs> yeah, that was. Yeah, when we had like, a, I'll phone you five minutes ago to phone him half an hour from now to get Zig, who's a year ahead. Okay, go team. Yeah, <laughs> that was a fun session. I'm not gonna lie, that was a when lot of fun did, for me. It was wait, was Zig not having his thing? Yeah, it was already begun at that point, yeah. wasn't it? Uh huh. Because it was. We still walk. not resolved this. And Zig Nick's... still hasn't just got his comp back. <laughs> Nope. No. Yeah. You're so fucking bad. It's been over a year in the world. <laughs> yeah. Which is brilliant because that's Zig been has no comms. Like in the dark. So if we if we're generous and we say it's session seventeen, right? If we're generous, because it could be sixteen, right? Sixteen slash seventeen. Until now, forty two. Zig doesn't have that comeback, and it's been that has taken you guys a year, and Zig, a lot less than a year. Like maybe a couple of months. Um, I get genuine joy out of how terrible Zig is at life. Um, <laughs> but keeping you alive, yeah. But keeping I... himself in the right lineage, no. Um, so that was the end of chapter three. Really, we jump because that's when nineteen happens, and you look into like chapter three ends with you staring into Cinderella's eyes and going on your time warp journey, um, as we spoke about earlier. I am about revisiting Baskerville. Oh, yeah. And that was just, okay. and just a step to the right, quite frankly. We then move into <laughs> chapter four, uh, which is Holding Court. And it starts with Missing Medkit. And I believe this was us. We just decided to jump a year ahead for you guys. Yes. Um, and we yeah, so so missing the time. I explored what's happening there. Like, I, I, there's still some stuff that went on, obviously, with the Bone Sagers that hasn't quite been touched on yet. Like, mm-hmm. why am I wearing their armor now? Mm-hmm. I think that's something we'll need to probably discuss in future, because I have some vague ideas about what happened, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's not necessarily 100% hammered out. But then it's come up less than you'd think. <laughs> yeah, but maybe that's because the, the details you want to provide me haven't happened yet, so if you provide me those details, maybe it comes up sooner. I actually, like, just as a massive spoiler for everyone, there's a Bone Sage plot about a session away, just so I you had know. suspected there was one coming uh, for some reason because really? one of them spoke to me. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. I, but yeah, we'll get to that. We're nearly there, actually. Um, anyway, that particular part you're talking about, uh, with one of the more interestingly <laughs> reserved bone sages compared to what you experienced being Sidiel, yes! the weird chicken bone leg man, um, who seemed like a good guy in the end, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, really? so, right. <laughs> I don't. I mean, Zora maybe has different experiences, having firsthand seen the destruction one singular bone sage is capable of, which is tearing apart like waves of troops. <laughs> so look like anything to them. me. Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, so we've got missing medkit into the fire. Are we leaving? And revelations. Who wants to feel good old chapter four, which is holding court, which was primarily the assault on the drow. Throne ship. Uh, well, and that one we basically killed a lot of goons, and then we go to the, the throne room eventually. We did then, pretty well, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, what's his face? Purple Cocoon Man. Mm-hmm. Urgalas. Urgalas. Shows up and liquefies Queenie. Mm-hmm. And her um, pardon, man. And her pardon, man, dude. And they had a, a strange thing that we had. To oh do. yeah, it was a yeah. crazy demon thing. Yeah, crazy like Cthulhu. It definitely demon. looked like they'd, they'd done some sacrifice to get the thing there. Yeah, there was a massive pile of bodies in the middle. It seemed like they'd sealed the doors off to the main throne room and you had fought your way through waves of people to get to there. And then by the time you had opened that again, yeah, they had a pile of dead drow. They'd summoned some elder horror thing and... Yeah, it started attacking everything, quite frankly, until wonderful Urgalas of the Purple Cocoon appeared and froze everybody but one of you. Was it was Lyco the only one that wasn't frozen? I'm sure somebody, one person, maybe it was next five? Oh, um, I don't remember. There's a good chance it was next five because he's got racial bonuses. Yeah, like I remember somebody didn't freeze, but they just didn't move on purpose. Um, it's also before that in the fight before the throne room, you actually got to witness the the blades for the first time from uh, Lyco as well. Yes, that's true. 
That was our first one. Oh, oh yes. Uh, the uh, I remember describing it like, like, like getting like the drow guy obviously like deflected a blow, caught him off, gu- caught him off guard. Like just, just managed to screw him a little bit. It's like, but I, I described it as like I had him in a position where he couldn't really strike back at me, mm-hmm. and just lined up the shot with his head and shoved it through to me. Yes. <laughs> it was quite... Br- I, I was very pleased with getting to display them for the first time in particularly gruesome fashion. Yeah, because you were pretty engaged with that guy for like a good chunk of the fight, so it was pretty... Yeah, oh, because he's a whip thing! Mm-hmm. Yes, yep. I caught the whip round one of them, stabbed him with it so he couldn't pull it away, mm-hmm. and then stabbed him through the skull Which is just one. an awesome visual, quite frankly. Gruesome, it was but- glorious! <laughs> oh. Sorry, yeah, like, yeah, I'm remembering the full details of that. It was what I wonderful. liked about that specifically is it said that Lyco is willing to get gruesome as well. Yes. Um, like Willing the, and very much able. Yeah, um, which was nice. Uh, we then had, like, Zig kind of appear and disappear. Temporarily, like, unstuck a bit. Here, there, and everywhere. Johnny um, Pilgrim. Yeah, like rolling random d10s and 12s as you appeared in different places yes. and d8s and such too. Um, <laughs> and I think it was the first time that Zig has done a lot of healing in... A lot of spells in general, actually. In the game in general. Um, um, we learned the horror that is that force disc move, because, God, that was effective. Oh, heck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is it? And also just mind yeah, drift being disc, a <laughs> Um, to us, all quite well, being his good old that, self. Like, um, whether <laughs> enough time to watch combat track and really like affect pretty much every day I think in the scene as well. Like, yeah, it was kind of good. Um, also, just how hard it is to actually damage Nix Five in general. Um, mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, and don't worry, that's that that will change. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in forty three. Um, yeah. But yeah, so. Chapter 4 was kind of short and sweet. It got you Zig back, pretty much, is the gist of it. Uh, you just went through For the, the most part. You met her glass, he liquefied people and took the egg with him. The golden egg that um, the Dry Queen had. And then he vanished. And then, you know, he kind of regarded you guys in a way. Vanished and then you just met... Well, he's found some goblins in a holding cell. Michael kindly went, okay, you just go. Bastard! <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you got the Radiant Supreme, right? Out as well. You found him locked up. Oh, yes. Yep. All dried up. Well, the the goblins had done nothing to me. That's true. Bastard! Um, they were just sitting there in in, in the magic cell thing. I'm like, what's, what's the. Why, why leave them there? You know? Yeah. They're all. <laughs> like the bastards. <laughs> I don't like. Listen, I've never seen these goblins before. Yeah. Just like, like, like these these Dude. asses had them locked up. They're probably they're, they're all wearing seen. their scout badges that say they've overcame a Vesk challenge, right? Um, <laughs> if deserve it. They're Vesk and Vesk cover scout badge. In yeah. the Sha. Mm-hmm. Oh dear. And then um, then you've met some weird shadowy thing with like, you know, almost like the the shadows were hiding some kind of otherworldly creature, and uh very fitting force field that seemed to like watch everyone as they were reacting and speaking and unsure if it could uh, actually understand you guys mm, Code Veronica it was a very nice tense scene actually <laughs> I really enjoyed that um, which I think was the one which was uh, Revelations I believe um, maybe are we leaving? I don't know I forget which one he's had that moment where he's unlocked the uh, the cell and then Nyx was yeah, standing by to like lock it back up again and as it unlocked there was that dread, that mm. wave of utter dread um, that washed over everyone. It was kind of crippling to the point where you couldn't hit the button to lock it back up. And all the shadows and rainbowy colours all swirl around back into Edgar Westland, revealing that maybe oh, he isn't quite a person. Um, but the physical embodiment of capitalism. <laughs> 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 and cigarettes. Actually, yeah. the physical embodiment of capitalism is a Che Guevara t-shirt. <laughs> I My mean, brother's got one of those. It's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've got one of those. You decide <laughs> to leave, which is the are we leaving? You leave with a Zig, an Edgar, and the Radiant Supreme. 
Mr. Rochari man. So, yeah. You just got back to the ship, there was a pile of dead drown, Alice standing there looking pleased with herself. Um, and then you just picked up a bunch of laser pistols and laser rifles and, whatnot, yep. and jumped on board and got the fuck out of the, the throne ship, quite frankly. Just kind of left that, actually, where it was. Um, <laughs> I mean, what, what else would we do? <laughs> like, I mean, you could have just taken it as a ship, but... Um, it seems large! Yeah, lots to manage. Um, but yeah, so you just left there. You then had the, obviously, slight intermission, shall we say, where Hermani stopped Ooh. the ship halfway. Then you guys were in a big chat with Hermani. Him and Edgar had chats as well. The Radiant Supreme was then confronted. He drank the Drow Queen as well at this point. Not the Hermione. Radiant Supreme. This is Hermione, Hermione. yes. Yep, Hermione the Radiant Supreme the drank the Drow Queen. Wait. Wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, have a problem. <laughs> yeah, I think this is where we had our revelation of the bomb threat as well, I think. Um, this particular mm. scene, maybe. Was this? No, this was later. I think this was definitely later. Um, and yeah, it was... An interesting moment because it was like Zig kind of coming to terms with the Radiant Supreme not being perfect. It was definitely like a big kick in the the questioning everything sort of mindset of Zig um, at that point because you know obviously he just had this blind faith in big Radiant kick Supreme in the ass. Mm -hmm. and it was you know obviously Lyco who was like here <sighs> by the way I know you like this guy and he's you know this big thing but you know he might not be all that he seems i don't think he's being truthful and he's like no mm -hmm. and then you know it took it it took a lot at that point for Zig to even confront the radiant supreme so it was it was kind of big moments for him at that point yeah and i think like likely even went and like confronted the radiant supreme as well which was yep. obviously zig over over a a lot of it and it was it was good because again it was like it was you know more than you're letting on Type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good, and it also showed like a little bit of. Um, I feel like at least a little bit of, maybe not so much respect. He can be a little disrespectful towards Zig, but a, a concern for him. And yeah, he wasn't just doing that because the guy was hiding something. It was also a sense of like, but you know, we have a we have a bit of a stake in this because one of ours is involved in your business and it's not just uh -huh. like okay this guy isn't going to tell us the truth there's also the aspect of but it's the equivalent of it being somebody in your crew's dad having a problem right it's like the, yeah it's the it's, same he's idea. not just random npc one uh-huh yeah it was the yeah. same as if something happened to shakos or something as well do you know what I mean it's the same idea um like no it was good it's it was also good kind team. of uh, the the first the first time like Lyco was taken on that sort of mentoring mm -hmm. um position for Zig, whereas before it was always you know ah oh, there's Zig scratch head move on yeah um, there's a our small rat that's with us for some reason and yeah that's literally the first interaction I had with you mm -hmm. yeah what I like though as well is like from a, a viewer on. perspective as well it does seem like Lyco becomes the surrogate. For Zig when he yes. loses the Radiant Supreme, um, and that and and even now he's still like uh, as he's kind of falling away from the crew, sort of in his head. Lyco's still that sort of being that voice of reason. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, what Lyco says makes sense most of the time. Whereas before it was obviously you know um, his relationship with Nix or. Um, but being med kit for the captain and mm -hmm. that sort of thing where he's falling away from that it's Michael who was more distant at the beginning being more this is the kind of grounding point towards the crew as opposed to everyone else which is yeah, I think it helps he's a lot more grounded than the crew <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> dead. yeah. <laughs> oh I didn't even mean that <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Um, the puns just happened. They're good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was the end of primarily chapter four, which was good. Um, obviously, Hamani and Edgar vanished together, I, up to what can only be assumed as good. And they leave the ship. Your ship then gets like fired back into drift space, and then you use exit drift space into wonderful chapter five called Substructure.
which was the opening of, oh look, it's Absalom, and there's a giant city ship firing at what looks like the Euxian fleet. Oh, This was a stressful arc. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. That was just stress. And then that says they had Lyco being like, oh, fuck, and then vanishing from the ship because you were about to jump again to go to Akaton. And then Lyco was taken from the ship by Sindel yeah. as the space station of Absalom was falling apart around you. And Sindel was like, hello. <laughs> Things you. have happened. <laughs> right. <laughs> um... Yeah, and it was it was good because you got that nice little West Wing scene with Sindel, right? Um, where you and it were walking down the track. Oh, of course, yes, I know, I know what you mean now. Yes, right. Um, Not quite the usual setting for the West Wing, but yeah, uh, yeah the walk and talk. Uh huh. Um, yeah, <laughs> and that's about the last we see of him, obviously. Yeah, because that pretty much leads you to being told. There's way more to this journey than you're aware of, and you know that. Um, yeah. Like we've taken some steps together. That like he totally bought into your um, or Sindel, the genderless entity, totally bought into your like not ownership, but like um, like utility, your your serv like your servitude, if you will, to the sense of he's like, I want you to work for me. Here's what I can offer you, and he travels through your mind time, right? <laughs> um, with the station flashbacks. Or teleports, yeah. and obviously it was he spent a year in his service while looking for a Zig, and we obviously will talk about what happened during that year, um, throughout the rest of the game. But you and Sidney all got a pretty good working relationship. You get to wear his house armor. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And even just the the ability of him to be like, "Oh, you're within calling distance. I'll pull you to me." Um, yeah implies a certain utility to the relationship. Uh, it pretty much just unloads on you, like, here's here's kind of what happened. And you ask him a bunch of questions about, uh, I believe, Urgalas at that point, don't you? So, Yeah, and he sort of... Well, in in his manner, kind of informs him that, obviously, he's not too keen on our kind, the undead, as it were. Yeah. Um, is if Urgalas is a Librian that comes from before the yeah. Undead were popular. Yeah. And he sort of is, is, you know, his intent is to take the stone and he sort of offers almost, like, not so much even says, like, I'm going to do this. It was almost like, a, well, here's what I'm thinking. Tell me your name on this. Like, there was a degree of respect implied in the fact that we discussed it, but, like, he's going to go and intervene. Yeah, because the option was. <laughs> You were you were standing in like the plaza by this point of uh, the damaged like giant. I was gonna say citadel, but yeah, it really is. I guess the citadel, like the the space yeah, station. Yeah, pretty much is. And um, we Bigger had a city. the crew were pretty much rigging the ship to jump beyond the conflict zone into the space station, and we had them jump a brief drift drive moment into Absalom Station Plaza. And yeah, Sindel was standing there saying, So, Urgalas seems to want the Star Stone. The Star Stone is what kind of keeps this entire thing going. That's a source of power that people don't really understand. And I am a source of power I don't understand. So Yeah, he's sort of like, well, I can, I can fill that role for... I can buy time to help with the evacuation, which was still ongoing. There were still hundreds of thousands of people on the station, right? Um, and Urgalas said to you, I can come with you and help you on your journey of self-discovery, or I can stay and like let as many people get off the station as possible. And at that point, I think your ship appears um, and crashes into the, the grass plaza, the park. And um, yeah, that was our episode Choose, which was brilliant. Um, when I had the wonderful oh, You Don't Believe the Day I've Had um, which I think is when S. Kate introduces herself to the ship because I think you guys all team up to go find Shakos down in the lower depths and Nyx5 stays to jury rig more of the ship to try and jump again oh, God, yeah uh, S. Kate turns up at the end of that and goes okay cool 
I need to be on the ship because I want to hitch a ride off the space station, please. And then Nyx, I believe, was like, uh, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Through a little altercation. Yeah. There's... Which, for there where Nyx is now, there. I love this yeah. scene, because where Nyx is now with his goal of trying to, like, put her to rest, spoiler alert, everyone, the, uh, like, <laughs> yeah, it's super interesting giving this really tense moment of, you blew up her limo, and we were supposed to find you, and then you invaded her ship earlier, which we never spoke about, where she booted every day around the ship a bit and stabbed yeah, her. Yeah, that's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, so we skipped that bit. Let's not talk about it. Yeah, and then... Um, <laughs> Yeah, like, although she was genuinely impressed by both Zig and Zora, right? Because Zig mentally and Zora physically. Because um, she went to boot Zora across the room and, like, Zora really held his own. And then when she tried to get the information about graduation day from Zig, Zig pretty much booted her out of his head psychically and slammed the mm. door on her. So, yeah, like, you were pretty formidable, considering that S. Kate was a very formidable person herself. Um, but yeah, like, then we have, like, Nix's tension with her, right, on the like the pretty much crashed and somewhat becoming less useless by the second and by the mm -hmm. dice roll uh, ship, which mm -hmm. was good. Um, what was going through, if you remember, Nix's uh, head in that instance? Because you were probably still in, I guess, distrust mode of her. I was, and I think it was the... Um, partially, I think, it's Nix's inherent suspicion of I don't want to say corporations and things, but, mm. you know, those large organizations that send warriors around making money. I think at the time he wasn't distinguishing a huge amount between Abadar and Aspis. Yeah, which makes sense, um, right? Cause it's it like kind of felt we're stuck in the middle of a war. Yeah, and I mean, it definitely, I definitely implied that in the story, definitely. Um, mm. Like, it seems like the Bank of Abadar and this arms dealer aren't really exactly seeing eye to eye. Um, yeah. Um, and so it definitely was. Just a general suspicion of servants of you know moneyed interests. Mm -hmm. um, For me, like but, there was definitely like visual and thematic themes of angels versus demons as well. Yeah, that was a strong thing um, they visually put in. Yeah, I, I definitely picked up on that, but I think the yeah, Nyx wouldn't really care about the aesthetic involved. No, I think that makes sense. I don't think the crew would specifically care, but more from an audience point of view. Yeah, it was definitely yeah. the intention. Um, and. Then there was obviously just the general feeling, I think, of a lack of respect in a lot of moments with SK. Yeah, as if um, like that user we were getting in the way or something. Or yeah, yeah. like user there to be utilised when it's useful, not uh, not colleagues yeah. or allies. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I think up until that moment, it was just like, hey, hey, we can do better than you're giving us credit for. Um, yeah. So why are we going to help you now that you need us for something? Uh -huh. Like, yeah, what are you offering us, pretty much? Uh -huh. Which does make yeah. sense, right? Because, I mean, why, why let yourself be pushed around by people that you have no idea what their agenda is, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that all makes sense. And then, you get downstairs, you rescue Shako, you work your way back up, weird zombies, you uh, get into the uh, ship, and you hit the jump button, and the engine's some weird fucking crystal duct tape monster. And <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh god, fucking, yeah, <laughs> do not go in the engine room. And then you sort of drift for about three weeks in drift space without realising it, because you fire through violent drift space. What year is this? And then you end what up... What year? Chapter 6, <laughs> Out of the Fire. Uh, and that's when you find yourselves crashing towards Versus, and you get the choice, Zig, our wonderful pilot. Um, <laughs> what side do you want? to go to the cold side or the warm side and obviously it was a silly question. I wonder what side <laughs> Zig chooses to go to. And that's session 29, sunny side yes. up. Hashtag hot fix. <laughs> um, yeah. Who named that one? Was that a me? Uh, I don't know. I think it was a group effort that one, sunny side up. Because um, then we have over easy as well and we kept our egg. I do like my eggs. Pretty much anyway. So <laughs> he's crash landed on versus. He's did what you can to jury rig stuff, got yourselves a wee convoy on the go. I um, and he's headed all the way up he's killed some bandits in the the, the desert, right? The the sunny desert, the solar wastes, as it were. We annihilated them. Oh yeah. Yeah you did. There was like what, nine of them or something or something like six of them, I can't remember. There was a bunch of them. And you literally cool. just got out of your trucks, shot them, got back in your truck. Yeah. Yeah. Zig, do you want to field that one? 
Um, I think what happened was Zig jumped out and was like, ah, shit, what do I do? I know. And then turns out he didn't know because he didn't read the rules. <laughs> no, that was pretty much like, I think, um, over easy as the, the rule book session, quite frankly, when everybody yeah. has to learn the poison rules. Yeah. Um, oh. um, yeah. I would never learn the point. It was one of those cases where, in my head, I understood how it worked, uh -huh. and then when it said "see ra uh, radiation rules," I was like, "Okay," and um, jumped to radiation rules, and then went, "Wait, what? Why does this <laughs> unpick everything I once knew?" I was like, "This made sense up until I read the rule." <laughs> <laughs> that's t that's some talent they got for that. Yeah, it's incredible. This is so. This is a good segue into the. This is why I asked you guys, try designing your characters in a different system, because the idea of playing in Starfinder's lore appeals more, right? I would love to play more mm. in this world once we finish this game and do like a different storyline or can, like what you have done to this world later. Um, or even during I love the, I love the, I love the, I love the actual like setting Yep, is... Yeah. Absolutely top notch, fantastic, wonderful. <laughs> it is cool. Um, I really like it. It's just the actual rule set we're given to work the rules with. Rules make no sense. So, Calum, you said you'd built Zig in Stars Without Number Revised, which is a system I'm very eager to run at some point. And that was the first thing that came to mind because it's a relatively easy character build. Um, how how well did your Zig build go? Because I know that you won't be able to build Starfinder specific characters. In another no, set with um, Starfinder options. So I basically went obviously obviously went psychic and mm -hmm. did not make a space plumber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um and I basically took Zig down the route um of healing and um telekinesis. Okay, yeah. Um, because at level one, because essentially that's what Zig had at level one. Obviously, other than mind thrust and mm -hmm. thingy, but he could heal and he could telekinetic projectile. So that sort of made sense. Um, and really, like, there's not that much different, other than you know the actual like spells lists and yeah. Um, well, for Th me, that's like, like you're the only you're difference. But I feel like is fine by me, right? See, using narrative yeah. tags instead of like mechanical to build something like you guys could like literally make. Okay, like oh, he's not a human because every day and obviously stars out number primarily as a human, but like you can be undead for everything that means for being undead. Just no mechanical reasons. Just like being in a soki has no mechanical reasons other than we know you're short, right? Yes. Um. So yeah, like things like that, because I, I probably wouldn't use Star Set Number for that because Star a uh, Starfinder is a bit more like fantasy in space. I'd maybe use Genesis yes. as a system because there's mm -hmm. a lot more customizability. It's just although mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I you know what I know there's been a lot of expansion done since that maybe makes it more friendly to certain settings, but I definitely felt like a trying to play a paladin type architect 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 <laughs> <laughs> archetype. Yeah. Fuck. It, it didn't want you to do that. Uh, it was like, just your a level one paladin, not a yes, not a level woe paladin. Sadly, no. But even like, even then, it's like you you were literally in a say you you can take all these things. You'd be much better just not using them though. They're 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 much more likely to just destroy everyone and everything around you than they are to actually achieve anything. But yeah, it's something I'm looking forward to talking about again post this game, right? Like, once we're done with this game, I, what the future of Starfinder for us as a setting is, not so much what the uh, the system is, because I'm not eager to run back to the system, but I don't mind using the system as a art reference book for whatever we do next, um, given that. But anyway, back on our... away from the aside. That was a... You guys getting all the way up past the problems of the desert, you get to the versus checkpoint, which is the one of the ways into the cities from the, the solar wastes. Hand in all your stuff, check in with those guys, pretty much set up shop for a bit on versus. And you just work away yeah, as at least we Car Hole, the repair business. Car Hole. Um, car -hole. Worked with some interesting dwarven characters 
uh, that got you some work and some jobs there. I don't even remember that guy's name. Um, the random dwarf that got you all the uh, oh. the business. Um, in fact, I remember. I forgot at that point. To yeah, right. Like the fact that I remember <laughs> it existed was a thing. Um, Lyco checked in with uh, Babak and got utilized for some wire or the vesk here, right? When you mm. realized, oh, it's been three weeks. Fuck. And unfortunately, we've not had much of an opportunity to look into that due to events that would soon <laughs> just... Which was fun, because at least then when Zora got recalled by his old boss, Matt Va, the Event Horizon, uh, that got you a, a chunk of the intel you'd probably need, right? Um, can I tell you about mm -hmm. that, Zora? True. Uh, oh, when, you mean when um, you abandoned Ivan? Uh, yeah. We're skipping over the part where Alice blew up a diner, just so you know for now. Um, <laughs> Or she aimed at M.O. <laughs> yeah, M.O. is not dead. <laughs> the Hashtag to be M.O. Fair, lives. <laughs> how is she not to know that the explosion in the diner would um, hmm. explode the diner? RPGs don't melt onyx legs. Steel memes. Yeah, he's gone for it. I don't. Please help. <laughs> But yeah, so anyway, Event Horizon Sometimes RPGs took you up. Sometimes don't what you want, right? Um, yeah, it took me up. Told me about uh, Double Gash, the, 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 the... Grave Epoch like, Annihilator? Yeah. We did do try to start the war back up with Patch War Roads um, and Matt for once to uh, stage VQ to stop. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Cheeky Q. Yep, yep. Yeah, um, so you're pretty much it. put in the place of if we lost to Mogesh and he vanished or he was killed, that would be okay, right? Um, yeah. Well, just the, the worry of a civil war within the the Viscarium, since Matt is aware that they should not fight a war in two fronts because the war with the swarm is still all consuming, right? Um, mm. And it's almost like Demogesh has maybe forgot that since he's been in the Pact World system. Being like, oh, he's just wrapped up in what's happening Someone here. needs to tell him that we don't need your civil war. <laughs> um, yeah, I think... What else happened in this one? In Out of the Fire? Because we've got that. We've then obviously salvaged... We've got this shit, I suppose. That exchange well, as well. That's later. Um, you get a ship later, I guess. You get it signed to you, yeah. I guess you do, yeah. The... The final hour, as you name it. Um, you argue with a dock worker? There's that. Um, oh, yeah. That poor, I that forgot poor this poor vest kid. Um, God. God, he's such a bully. Um, served. Served the purpose. Served well. Mm -hmm. We learned the Vesk salute has just been punched with two hands on your shoulders. Um, big Vesk claws. Um, what else happened in that one? So we, we met Finn, the AI of the... Uh, or the VI, I should say, of the... Well, have I met him? I don't think I've met him. No, I don't think so. Well, like, so there's been a lot of teleportation. Like, you, you've met him in the sense of he helped pilot the ship, the shuttle, up to the final hour. And then when you got there, like... No, that wasn't, because you weren't there. You went with SK. No, sorry. I was, yeah, yeah. You went with SK through the golden doors. So, yeah. Indeed, they. Because I couldn't fight any of those fuckers. Yeah, because everybody went their own fucking way, yeah. And ruined the diner. A yeah. perfectly good diner full to of be perfectly fair, that good was, customers. That was Alice's idea. We didn't actually find any bodies. Really. It was fine. Um, Showed how useful Ivan, the ooze, was, though. Um, and how attached to the crew he seems to be, right? Um, since he seemed to help people. Good, 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 good oozy lad. Yeah, seems like he feels like one of the crew as well, and then he's ditched him on verses. Um... <laughs> We were fucking like re-diverted. Right? At any point, you can be like, right, we'll go through the golden door in twenty minutes. We need to go pick up Ivan. Um, but no, there was none of that. Uh, I can't pick up Ivan. This is true. You don't want to do that. Neither does Alice. Alice wants to stay the hell away from that. Um, also, is like you're welcome. We skipped over the part now. where you killed Alice, so just you're welcome. Um, and we're next. Yeah. Also, you're muted in case you didn't know. Ruined him? I don't know. I feel like, oh. if anything, it was kind of an upgrade. You're all ah, cool with them now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, her weird, uh... That is my, my aesthetic. Yeah, because, like, going back, when did that happen? That was during the Nyx 
Uh, no, so it was when Lyco was taken, that, right? So that was when we getting the hell off Absalom. Yeah, yeah. So like when Lyco was taken, uh, that's exactly when Zig thought oh, this is the perfect time to mind link. With, oh yes, with Alice. <laughs> yeah, that went really, went, really well. Lyco, Zig, and uh, Zora swiftly went off to go rescue Chakos, so Zig didn't have to stay behind with Nix Five, and then. Then Nyx went and strangely connected with Alice and ended up in some weird white space place again, really. A weird liquid floor. Very bizarre. Yeah, some existentialism at its finest. Um, <laughs> we've skipped over query as well from the roast fire, but that's fine. Uh, lots, of, lots of query. The less I him, the better. God. I actually love it. See the dialogue in that, <laughs> by the way, is so good between you trying to ask questions and realising that you're getting the types of answers Nix5 would have gave. Um, Infuriating, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's, it's actually it's, it's worth Speaking it. of in a mirror darkly. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's such a good listen. So that's the yeah. sometimes the goblins win or in the in the darts win. One of those two. And God, it's such good dialogue. Worth a listen. Um, we've then got, moving forward, you guys go to chapter 7, which was within the giant we walked. And, yeah, you just head into the vault, finally. Uh, there was a bit before that about moving between uh, the uh, complex that had all the, like the stewards and the Vesk, since the Vesk seems to be in charge of everything. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, what else have we got going on? You just head to the vault, and then you just meet some some dragonkin, right? Some dead drow. There is the session Thunderhead. If you recall that, and do you want to field that one? <sighs> we got beat. Okay. Yeah. We got beat. Up. We lost. Oh, it's unpleasant. Yeah. I for one. Didn't like it. Yeah, it was pretty much a. <laughs> I was upset. Because you were all kind of on the let's get rid of Hamani train, and then mm. you fought one of his goons, and it went badly. It went horribly. It didn't go badly. It went horribly. It really did. About as bad as it could have gone. Yeah. Yeah. Bless it be the tank, but. What, SK? <laughs> um, yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, she. She did what she could, but that was sadly the session we lost, SK. Mm. I haven't lost that so well. <laughs> <laughs> and then, moving swiftly on, we then have you guys exploring the vault. Hamani takes you on a wee tour and then turns into a giant black <coughs> dragon and eats the void egg and then leaves mm. you guys in the vault alone. What does it say at that point? I can't remember. That's why it's recorded, right? That's why you can go back and listen to it. <laughs> um, it's not my job to remember this stuff. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. damn it, but it's you. You said <laughs> <laughs> If it's a man, how dare you? Um, and then we have you guys dicking around in the vault, quite frankly, to the point where Zig ends up in a weird seizure by trying to like mind link with the fucking vault itself. You expect nothing less. <laughs> yep. And then so <laughs> just just anything that might potentially, arguably, be called alive. He's just like that's okay. That's it. You know, you gotta try it. Yeah. Zig, don't put your dick in it. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Any hole is a mind link, and yeah. the, it's just like R two D two with this little uh, droid adapter. It's just I'll just I'll just hack this. Oh it's yeah, it really is. Pick it in. Yeah. Hope for the best. Yep, no, so this is Zig and this is what teenage mystics are like. Yep. This yep. Is oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Teenage mystic. Wow. <laughs> um, teenage mystic, scary rat. And then you've got a. Uh, I was going for Teenage Wasteland, but I like yours as well, the turtles. Uh, yeah. Teenage <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mystic T-Rex. Yeah, after that, we've got uh, you guys Did you told... see Teenage Mystic T-Rex? Teenage Mystic it's... T Rex would be awesome. Sure. sure. <laughs> that's, yes. that's, 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 soon. that's a character that's, I want to play in. That eight. is our oh, Saturday uh, morning TV show. Uh, we'll build that. <laughs> and uh, it'll be called Rex Calibur. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no! Oh. 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 That's upsetting. Oh. Good night, folks. So, uh, uh. Oh dear. And then moving swiftly on, uh, we have the flashback where Zig pulls Nix Five and Zora through time 
into graduation day again. Oh, yes. Ah, yes. You'll never escape mm. from it. Yeah, you just want to talk about that one for me? Um, maybe if it's that time. Me, possibly. Mm. Or maybe it's what happened before. Who knows? Well, yeah. if we look um, at what happened in uh, the Baskerville, it would certainly seem to make sense that uh, this had happened all along. You're just seeing a facet you didn't, you weren't able to perceive before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Zig was adamant he was going to try and change it um, at one point, mm -hmm. um, and he just like forced his way through the the, the crowd straight to the the front. Yeah, because like the things that happened differently this time is like Zig sticks around and like heals the Radiant Supreme instead of like seeing his like echo run off, right? Um, yeah. And then that kind of explains how the Radiant Supreme was able to come to your aid later in that particular scene when he wanders through the corridor immolating people towards the teleporting room you mentioned from graduation day. Um you recall seeing like the the drow queen walk trying to like leave with the, the solar egg and then obviously you have seen her with the solar egg in her throne ship. However, Urgalas took that from her in the throne ship. But now you have it because you have taken it from the graduation day. So yeah, that part remains unanswered. We've the split the timeline or as a person who's a bit more wanky might describe it. Fragmented Eternity. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well, perhaps... And there we have it. I apologise for that. <laughs> That's fine. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah, during this, you, during this, you've also learned, because you meet a very interesting person after the flashback, you've, go, you've pulled the, the solar egg from Graduation Day Temple, um, which is not what its name is, it's the Solar Monastery. And... <laughs> You... It's the graduation day temple. <laughs> yeah, it's the graduation day temple. <laughs> and um, this is probably what the map's called. And um, you pull it through the time. You then go exploring a bit and you find a prisoner in the vault. Uh, X5, do you want to field this one? Yeah, there's some person in a vault. Mm. Uh, and a drow as well. Uh, and no, she was stuck in there with a tree. Mm -hmm. And. We foolishly let her out. <laughs> you just have done that with everybody you've met. You just know that, right? Yeah. You seem captured. Release. It's what a likely way. <laughs> um, Lyco seemed to play the One day I'll be a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> if we do it with every prison cell, one of them will be innocent. Um, <laughs> yeah, but that was it was a good scene. There was a lot of good dialogue in that moment, the Far From the Tree episode. Um, yeah. I really enjoyed that because you guys learned a lot about when this person may have been from, which was pre-Gap. Um, for those who yes. don't know, the Gap is that period of time that people don't remember anything. And photographs undone themselves and memories got wiped and bullshit like that. Or well, as we like to call it, previous sessions. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> yeah, the vague recap of vagueness. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like the Far From the Tree just being her, what seemed like being a prisoner, yet it, once you had agreed to her terms, which was I will help you get to Akaton if that is your wish, if you release me from this prison, she releases the big golden shield that was around her that you assumed had been the, the prison and she just says burn the tree I think that's where we left chapter chapter 7 with you uh, pretty much agreeing to that, quite frankly. Let's face it, he's really like, mm, sure, okay, okie dokie. Okay. I lodged yeah. my concerns. Yeah. Went. I lodged my concerns, but then, as well. I feel uh, like I lodged my concerns is kind of my summary for the next several sessions, though. Aha. Uh -huh. Just also, again, <laughs> like, lodging proposals was uh, Zora's. Uh, yeah. We have... Uh, uh, no, 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 no. I did, I did say we should be right out of the monsters, right? Everybody was like, let's do it! I was like, okay then. I mean, we do have recorded evidence of how the conversation went. Um, <laughs> and then we've got, obviously, chapter 8 that's as of yet to be revealed its name. 
and uh, Dinosaurus Rex being session one, and that starts <laughs> with you guys burning the tree, um, and the ashes of it falling over. We have Nix Five's moment of this is familiar. Why is this familiar? Um, and then everybody else like shuffling on towards the exit of the the vault, and then the queen hanging back with a obviously her revealing that she was the original droid queen and her sister usurped her, etc. Um, she says, next five, you don't remember me, do you? Um, and then, obviously, shuffling forward. He's then fight a dragonkin. She opens the vault door halfway through him, so that ended him quicker. Um, you did pretty well in the fight, though, to be honest, up until that point. He's have definitely tanked up a bit. And then you mm -hmm. take Eskate's well. body through. You all go through and you find her palace, quite frankly. Go into her big abandoned palace. You don't know where you are specifically. Go out and kill some dinosaurs and bring them back and have some meals. And then you all get weirdly a this big psychic gestalt, I guess. Yeah, that was... Well, not gestalt, but we were... Obviously, we were hearing each other's thoughts. A weird repercussion of our incorrect preparation of the meat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, uh, but yeah, it was, it was quite... like. I I I liked it because it was like simple down to it was it was a very back to basics thing, mm -hmm. but it wasn't even it was actually almost more than back to basics because we never really hit basics much. Mm -hmm. We'd had uh, this sort of like the first mission thing, but our first mission was very much not normal. Things didn't go as expected or planned. Um. So yeah, it was it was interesting. Like we're actually quite late into the late into the day, we're getting this sense of oh yeah, here's a normal simple clean. We have to obtain some food. Let's go kill some wildlife. Like. Almost like what uh, Alex had said earlier um, about type of game this was, right? It's yeah. right back yeah. to the oh, it's you versus the wild, right? And we slaughtered the wild. We fucking killed them. <laughs> Annihilated them. <laughs> bang, so like bang. A couple of shots, yeah. And then Turns out, <laughs> murder oh. zombies and laser cannons are highly effective against lizards. Yeah, and sometimes... Not like guys. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Per I will not be allowing plasma cannons in my D&D games. No, that's, that's valid. I'd, um, I'd advise against it, yeah, um, fair. Yeah. Just thematically. I am... Um, but then well, have, the goblins can have them, but... Yeah, right. We've still got to meet up with those <laughs> goblins at some point down the line. Um, <laughs> Penny, for your thoughts, was that session where you all ended up weirdly linked and everybody spoke to each other. Everybody was very polite with each other. Um, Not thinking. And it got, I guess, it summarised with... <laughs> yeah, that was fun. <laughs> you, you, did, yeah. you, did, um, <laughs> you did really channel the... I'm going to make a Buffy reference and I apologise. Did really channel like the the panic of like uh wasn't just Sander who else was it that did it in earshot um Willow I guess no it was it, like uh oh, Wesley like literally runs away mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it was definitely that sense of oh no oh no oh uh, no don't think uh -oh. <laughs> um, same as Ghostbusters right you know with the choose your destroyer type thing choose your form of your mm -hmm. destroyer yeah. It's like, what did you think, Ray? Uh, him. But, yeah, <laughs> Which is an excellent moment. <laughs> so good. And um, yeah, they kind of summarised with you all had been thinking, we, we we want to go kill a dragon, right? You want to go kill Hamani? And she said, I have something to show you all, if that's the case. Went all the way down to her, you know, hour long walk down the stairs into the dungeons. Really big fighting coliseum beneath the palace that she has, and you saw the remains of a dead dragon, a huge dead dragon, quite frankly. Um, but yeah, she then he went into negotiations. Zig gave up a little picture that he's got, a wee personal memento of uh, his little solar photo. Pains me. Yeah, and then the soaky silhouetted by the sun. Yup, a little holo photo, and you gave that to her. For a big pile of dragon bones, just so <laughs> she can stab him, Annie, with maybe his mum or grandmum. Like, yeah. What a good little rat. The true monster of this game, Zig. <laughs> uh, we then go into very sweet. aggressive <laughs> negotiations, leads us into 
the wonderful Zora, the silver-tongued Vesk diplomat. <laughs> Alright, so this one, Zora, how did that go? Yeah, uh, shit. I think you thought it was your finest hour. <laughs> That's the next ship he's getting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last ship, right? When you obviously get your uh, epilogue ship, it's the finest hour. <laughs> well, uh, I don't. Um, Shite. Mm. <laughs> Queens and evil beings and corporate leaders. And gun dealers are just terrible to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like you all kind of summarising. Wait, why is Zora the captain? Is it just because <laughs> Zora owned the ship? I think so. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah, the captain's the captain. Um, yeah, that was. Oh my god, that was agonising. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. And it was the fact that none of us were there to tell him. Oh, no, captain, why are you doing? This? I just love mm-hmm. the fact that it ended with her flipping him on his ass. Like, yeah, that was great fun. Like, <laughs> yeah. Cheap. I mean, you went to punch her in the shoulder. <laughs> I mean, um, it was it was an agreed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it was an agreed punching. And obviously, then her her distaste at not having anything to drink in her bar. Yeah. I am. Um, and then we get up to our last session, Rock <clears> Bottom. <throat> where, yeah. We discussed obviously trying to get off. In fact, before we go that far, we actually had Lyco's little web journey. Outside, yes. Trying to get uh, some <laughs> some hysteria <laughs> built up in the old forums, and then he got a wee. Uh, well, no, right. So he yes. was he was trying. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. We were yeah, actually, like actually done. Anyway, so. for those um for those wondering at home, oh. None of you. Um, <laughs> we we uh, and yeah. So I I was gathering info, seeing what the sort of conspiracy was saying, and uh, that's a real term. Honestly, it's just, it's such a good term, though. Yeah. Um, and yeah, my 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 sort of purpose in like spreading things that were like not they were just misinformation. They were things that we know that maybe the world at large doesn't know and just putting something akin to out there to get the idea moving um, because he is someone who uses those kind of like because he, he knows a lot of dodgy characters will be using these underground networks, these again perfectly legitimate websites but maybe places that are loosely moderated and places where you know, odd people gather Image boards, basically, right? <laughs> the image boards. So, Those odd ones. So, the idea is that you put that out, and you'll find the people who are more likely to take your weird shit seriously there, and you're also maybe going to broadcast it slightly to the criminal element there. And he's also aware, of course, that there will be people from the stewards and from other organisations monitoring some of this. Mm-hmm. So he is he is putting this out with the idea that. Someone somewhere is going to look into this. Maybe if only to see the fuck is he talking about? We've never heard this particular conspiracy theory before. Is is this just some random lone nutter? Or is there something behind this? Because <laughs> someone somewhere will will probably, if you repeat similar enough things a few times across a few popular threads, someone's going to look into it. And obviously someone very quickly put together that a number of these were coming from the same source. Um, and contacted me with like you know tell me more. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, but his main goal is like yeah, throwing those those little breadcrumbs out there and seeing who follows them, and kind of hoping that it will lead to other people getting a sense of what we're aware of, and maybe maybe someone out there somewhere will begin to act. Because he he can't just phone up, you know. Uh, hello, <laughs> Mister Baba. We are on. Uh, where are we again? Castrovel. Yeah. Oh god, oh. your audio is bad. Very bad. Yeah, that's terrifying. Disconnect and reconnect the cable if possible. If that makes it easier. Um. So we're in Castrovel. We're 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 on 
an, an abandoned wildlife reserve kind of bit <laughs> with the ancient drow queen who was usurped by her sister. You know, the one that, you know, the one that got drank. Uh, mm. Anyway, yeah, she got drank. Yeah, sorry, didn't tell you about that, did we? I can't remember if we did right. not. We um, did, yeah. Okay, we did, so, so yeah. Okay, all this shit, but also... There might be a vest of a war in your hands, and uh, you might be ground zero. Good luck. Yeah, right. Um, Can't really just do that over the phone. That's probably a bad idea. Yeah, because it's seems like... all right, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was that, Zora? So it's all right. I'm just don't. Because, time? obviously, Lyco is idea. a bit paranoid, but... Two seconds, like, what was that, Zora? Right, so... uh, sorry, look, next five is what I'm trying to say. Next five. Uh, just saying, I'd do it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Carry on, Michael. Cool. Carry on. Yep. Zeg, yeah. Still... So uh, that, that, that was the gist of it. I Zeg's think audio like, is still bad, just in case you know as well. He's <laughs> not. Yeah, it's, it's fucking horrendous. It's you and your northern internet. Um, he's not really feeling like he's in a position where he can safely act. Mm -hmm. But he's gathering intel and sort of disseminating what he wants people to sort of take away, mm -hmm. or just enough of it. Uh. And then, of course, yeah, the, 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 the contact, someone's put it together that this is coming from a common source. They've probably noticed that there'll be slight contradictions between the various versions of events, but there's a common thread. Mm -hmm. So whoever has followed that, figured out they're all from one source, is, is probably someone who's thinking, okay, so there are some key points this person is consistently putting across regardless of what else they're saying. So maybe that's the thing that's the real focus that we should be paying attention to. Yeah, right. Um, um, and so that person probably put that together. So, mm -hmm. so you yes, shall see how that unfolds. And I think bringing us right up to date, we have Nyx 5 dissecting dragon bones to fit safely in a dimensional pocket. We have yep. with it, the hope right. to then use the Drow Queen to help build a weapon together that helps kill Himani. Um, also made dragon armor. Yeah, right. Like, just in general, that's a thought. <laughs> yeah. That's a thought. I was just going to weaponize, but there's a lot of dragon, isn't there? You mm. going to come down to the uh, stadium and Nick's five is going to be covered in dragon. <laughs> yep. That's a thought. Definitely um, a thought. The problem about that thought is that Zig started hearing stuff, right? Yeah. And then wandered off, and then everyone went, wait, why is Zig being weirdly distracted? And I know that's not unusual, but it is now. And then Zig wanders off upstairs, everybody kind of follows... Lyco goes after him first, next five leaves, and then seems to be covered in white sap for some reason. It yeah, seems to be spreading. Uh, Zora eventually gets up and follows on. Then, yeah, next five seems to disappear completely into the white sap, uh, vanishing. Zora runs right past where next five should have been um, to get to Lyco. Lyco and Zora follows Zig down a corridor to the point where he f walks into a pool of water he investigated earlier. And then this big weird scary woman grabs him and pulls him in further, drown trying to drown him. Next five seems to be in the uh, the white space from Lorspire again, with the tree and the pond next to him. And from the pond, uh, there's nothing at this particular point in time. We have next five looking under the tree and he sees Query sitting there, quite the thing takes a bite out of an apple and holds it up to him and then at that point Zig falls out of the, the pond just launched from it, lands in the, the weird white space path I think it's pretty much where we ended our last session at Rock Bottom. Yeah. Exactly where we ended. So anyone want to unpack that at all yet? MD? Here's what I think's happening. <laughs> Go for it. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's there's obviously some connection between both of them and Query and the space in which the lower spire shit happens. Mm -hmm. Whether this is some future next shenanigans or or what have you. I'm not entirely sure yet, but that definitely seems to be a hint. Well, Again. Thoughts on that? <laughs> um I mean, obviously I've probably got a bit more insight into Nick's shenanigans, but uh I think Query is like a possible future for Nyx. Um, like one I of those X-Men storylines where they don't yeah. want to commit to it being the real future. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's a bit of a splintering. Um, I think it's because an aspect You can of say fracturing if you want. 
or fragmenting. Yeah, um, <laughs> as it's a fragment. Yeah. The fact um, that we have the the egg does suggest that that is something that can happen. Right, because mm -hmm. if you're saying that what happens is always what happened based on Lyco's experience going back in time and kind of causing the problems on the station, mm -hmm. then I didn't do it. that would assume <laughs> that the egg was always taken from this timeline, which meant that broke the timeline, which means if that is or was a future Nix, which has been vague but kind of implied, right? Yeah, yeah I, that's definitely um, something I was thinking. Especially since that Nyx has all the same white veins now, right? Um, mm -hmm. It's like as if he was in an interim step to getting towards Query. Um, I think Nyx actually asks Query, like, you know, who are you? And I think Query says something useful, like, you're not there yet. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it is it is interesting. <laughs> you ever tell me he says something useful? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, he, he very well could be like, I don't know, like a discarded timeline? Right? No? Mm -hmm. He might have broken yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Blame Zig. It's probably Zig's fault. It's maybe it's why Zig's there, fault. right? In the weird white space room. It's almost as if maybe that's why Zig was pushed out the first time. Right? Although. Because he's to blame. It seems like Edgar took him instead of being pushed out. Right? It's an interesting one. But he's been pulled in this time, which seemed to get him away from that weird water woman. Right? Yeah, Can I talk that about was that? Freaky like, yeah. as well. That was horrendous. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm. Not ideal. But yeah, so what's Zig's thoughts about being pulled into the white space again after having been kicked out of it many, many sessions previous? Oh, there's just oh, so much. <laughs> to the point where I'm like, I'm, I'm not even sure. Like, is is this... Which which Zig is this? I think at this point you can from summarize when the amount has of this zig come from is in this game right in general from all of us um can you imagine somebody trying to join now and been like okay. well if they do this will come in handy right it's like <laughs> oh what has happened and it's most of us going we don't really remember this bit but we think it was this um but yeah we know it was fun yeah right we had a laugh doing it and it was <laughs> You know, unexpected. We cried a little bit, you know. A lot, yeah. We cried a yeah. lot. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, it's been an emotional journey. Um, it has been definitely a journey. Because there's been hilarious parts and there's been really fucking sad parts. So yeah, it definitely has been It a has been. Um, that's us caught up on that so far. I think the one thing I want to end us on then is what we think the game is going to play out like, right? So, I have no idea. Let's be, <laughs> I think we're going to get distracted and Urglus is going to destroy everything. I, I think Urglus will turn out to be not all that bad after all. So, we're going to go with Zig. Do you want to start us off? Right. Let's let's give everybody their own time. Zig, from yeah, now, from... based on what we've discussed, how do you see this playing out? There's there's a few There's a few scenarios... That, that that could happen. Okay. What's highly likely and what we kind of don't want is we're just going to continue as we are and our glass is going to destroy everything and we're going to just all die. That would be bad. That would be bad. Um, we are going to unleash some force that is either worse or better than our glass. <laughs> Could this be your worse vision? Either, or even. either saving or destroying everything. Because we never spoke about your visions of the Radiant Supreme and also Grace saying oh, so the stranger by the way, the stranger oh, has geez. woke up and you should deal the with it. The stranger has awoken uh -huh. um, which oh man, oh this is I forgot all about that. <laughs> which is Octurn, right? It's another name for Octurn. Yes. The stranger. The um, which the is egg. right on the end end of the edge of the, the, the galaxy. Which I think uh, has Lyco actually looked at his Starstone compass yet? Like did we establish it yes, last that? Last time. Yeah. Yes. So obviously the Starstone compass points to the Star Stone. The Star Stone was taken by Urgalas, and the thoughts are that that will lead to Octurn. Way back when Nico was talking or 
she called it, uh, Zora was talking to Matva. Matva mentioned there was some weird activity on Octurne, but that's not their problem just now. That's a secondary problem. The Mogesh mm -hmm. is their problem just now. So, yeah. Um, and as far as Zig, I feel like there's kind of two... There, There is the, the possibility of, like, dark side Zig coming out, which would be really... Oof, I don't know how that would... <laughs> Yeah, Zigabyte, we've discussed dark it. Destroyer six, of Systems. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> dark, um, dark Zig Zag. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> dark Zig and Zag. Welcome to the dark Zig and um, Which would be, it. See, I th this is definitely sort of like a crux point for Zig, which will kind of kickstart that way. Like, I, I don't even know which way it's going to go, so. Yeah, because it really, I mean, either um, way it's going to be, you know, powerful Zig regardless, right? Given Powerful output. Zig. <laughs> and is is it going to be you know the 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 great person that we need or the, the evil entity that we really don't? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's hard to say. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I I'm looking forward to it. Me too. I really am. I next five. Do you want to go next? Um. Uh, my mind has shifted so much on how things are going to go down. Right. Um, well, you can talk about how you, you thought it was going to go to the point where it's changed, right, if you wanted. Yeah, yeah I, I think the involvement of the Vesk wasn't something that was going to get, that was going to get so much in there. Mm -hmm. um, mm. And I guess just from the the whole relationship with the Bone Sages... Uh, they seem out and out bad guys, hmm. perfect material, but we kind of seem like, hey, we're kind of on their side. Um, yeah, right. It's weird. So yeah, the choice of allies is, I mean, never good for us anyway. I mean, but, having uh, a bone sage or two, pleasant with you guys, isn't the worst yeah. when you might have to fight a Vesk civil war, right? <laughs> I will say I don't think Hamani is going to go to end game. Okay. Um, I feel like he's sort of a mid game. Not the mid game boss, but you know. Um, uh, Imagine this yeah. was mid game chat and we had yeah. the two years of this. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, but no, I feel like he's a, he's a speed bump that we're going to. I yeah. feel like it's a speed bump use of Drove 2, though. Like, I definitely yeah. feel use of Drove to the speed bump. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's see how bumpy it is. <laughs> um, Look at all yeah. these dragon bones of your grandmother we have, maybe. Yes. How Put low can face. you make the vehicle before it hits the speed bump, you know? It's all the um, additional dragon plating you've put on it that scrapes along yes. the speed bump. But yeah, I don't see him going to endgame, uh, ultimately. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, what the fragments actually are. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think that's probably yeah far more metaphorical and you know almost primordial entities and whatnot. Yeah, as opposed to um, r complete rip-off of the Infinity Stones, like everybody assumed at the start. Um, yeah, <laughs> which cool instead I'm just point. patching into D&D. Yeah. So, it's the friendship um, we made along that... Blah. So, it, yeah, what about like a next five and Alice's journey, right? Because that's been wild. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> uh, I think Alice has kind of been hurtling towards organic, uh, you know, quite a pace. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Nyx is not so enamoured with it, I guess. Yeah, it's uh, not like it's not Nyx's end goal specifically is to be yeah. fleshy, right? Uh, yeah, I think he finds the concept of you know, oh, now I'm a real boy, almost a little bit offensive. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, well, that, why, why that's why just a cheap answer to the question. It's yeah. a different material you're building the same thing out of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need to be organic to be valid. Exactly. I think that's a very strong like message for his like next five to be seeing, right? Which I like. Yeah. <laughs> um so I think that's always kinda of been the there's almost a little bit of tension of Alice's less experience. He feels like there's almost a teacher student element at times. Mm -hmm. Um which has lessened lately. But yeah, it makes for you know on top of his already awkward manner. Yeah, um, and it seems like there's a genuine makes... connection there because I think yeah. as we reviewed this, maybe people now realise why Alice was so enamoured with Nix Five is because she's th like mm -hmm. you were the first person she trusted. 
right? I think that's also almost holding him back on, you know, pursuing much, you know, any deeper emotional connection. It's like, hey, am I just the, the first person you saw? Is it uh, imprinting? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, then, that like, would be a really cheap way for Nick's to, you know. Yeah, but it's also, up. like, it's valid from Nick's trying to, like, factor in all possibilities, right, as well. Yeah. Is the don't compromise yourself for something that has multiple possible outcomes. And yeah. So, it, does, it makes sense. Um, I don't think they're going to go their separate ways in any form, but uh, um, yeah, I won't, you know, put anything in stone that you know they're going to go off into the sunset together. Mm-hmm. Um, I think or it just will enter the sun together. Like, yeah. I mean, it's equally <laughs> as valid in this game. Especially if Alice kind of continues down the organic path, I think that might yeah. leave a little bit of friction. But it's almost as if these are on opposite paths, right? Because she yeah. is the epitome of digital existence, right? Yeah, and you've been working your way to that in a way of almost an energy being, um, mm-hmm. and she's kind of going the opposite way. It seems. Yeah, so we're like almost always at least. <laughs> yeah, you bastard. Uh, my fault. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I feel like we might, you know, just. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, maybe end up in different mediums, but still, obviously, very <laughs> emotionally connected. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, that that's highly possible, quite frankly. Um, what about your thoughts on Urgalas? Uh, yeah, I mean, he is currently just utterly unknown mm-hmm. to Nick, I guess. Like, um, so it's conceptually very difficult to grasp. But you feel it's more like a force of nature than anything. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's very difficult to gauge intent. Agreed. Uh, but they will understand him next time. Yeah. <laughs> more, more maybe. maybe. We'll, we'll at least understand some some of what he says. Yeah, he's definitely worked on your language skills. Definitely. Yes, that is one thing I have done. Um, because <laughs> languages obviously are so rare in this game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I will take that and that new Android feature that means I get four other languages. Yup. I just need to make up four other languages for you to justify. <laughs> um, now, anything else you want to add to your predictions for the game or your thoughts on how it resolves? Uh, uh, I think we're going to see a marriage between the captain and the drow queen <laughs> and the forming of a new empire. Yeah. The, the Vrau empire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I imagine it'll go down with she wants an empire and he's like, yes, fine. <laughs> Yeah. It's easier to agree. Yeah. <laughs> yes, dear. Of course, Project dear. Way. Anything you yeah. say, dear. Oh, the yes, dear empire. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yeah, that's good. I yeah. Zor, I'll resent this. Well, um, tell us how much you resent it. And by that, I mean your your thoughts for how the game's going to go. Um, probably not going to marry the queen. Okay. Uh, okay. Probably not. Probably she likes me much. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, you're still alive, right? Yeah, that's true. You've not been made into uh, a desk bleed or anything, so... Yeah. It's not bad. I don't know. I don't know, right. I do think that, that her man is a speed bump. I do agree. They, they act that way. Sure. Do you agree that you caused the speed bump? Um... <laughs> nah. Nah, her man's a douche. <laughs> <laughs> he was gonna, he was gonna get in more way with sooner or later, right? So, yeah. but don't you want to fight, you know, Urgalath with a dragon on your side? No. Uh, he's saying he's on our side. So, like, we have no what, idea who's side. What if you like, rode a dragon into battle with your giant Doshko in one hand and your like your scythe in the other? You know, your drag queen next to you. You know, <laughs> yeah, like that piece of like epic fantasy art. <laughs> Bit of Boris Vallejo for yeah. me. <laughs> oh. Um. Uh, Urgalas, I've got no idea about. Uh, I don't know what's happening with him. Um. I don't. Don't you know what he's up to? I mean, it seems like he's on Octron from all of the hints in the story. Yeah. So it seems like that's where he went after the. What do you call it? Absalom Station thing. The destruction of. Yeah. Um, as to what that's playing out as, who, who knows, right? 
Um, what about just in terms of like obviously the Obsidian Star giving you orders about Demogesh, how that's playing at the risk of war potential? Uh, do you think Demogesh is that stupid, quite frankly? Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> I don't think, I don't think Vesk are like, I can't really imagine the Vesk being like super tactically minded, you know? Probably just like, we Vesk, we beat everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, they have beat everything they've fought so far. Exactly, right? I mean, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a bad assumption for them to think, mm-hmm. really. But Then surely what the way the Mogesh is doing this, right, if it's true, right? Is a bit subterfuge, right? He's infiltrated. Uh, yes, he's, he has. He's waiting. Like it's totally not a Vesk tactic by your definition, there, right? Mm. And you're an expert What's... on Vesk, so it's interesting. It's pretty subterfuge. Mm. This is a Lyco bullshit. But... This is. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. We're not beyond that. We're not, we're not beyond that old subterfuge. Mm. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I. Uh... Predictions for the end, then? Uh, I've I've got no clue. Hamani's gonna turn in, like spew a void dragon. The gold, the lovely dragon's gonna appear. They're gonna fuck off <laughs> to the void, like Babylon Five, and fucking <laughs> the far land in the shadows. <laughs> 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 Then we'll guess he's going to lead them because he's the first one. Mm-hmm. Like, fuck those. <laughs> I don't have a clue. He, so he's Jakar, right? You've got the Hint Supreme as uh, Kosh, right? Okay, yeah, I see this. I see it, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, then Dem- we'll guess he's the fucking Lorien. He's the mad Lorien guy. Like, okay. fucking. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, dear. Right, how dare you? Just stop watching Babylon 5. Also, every day that hasn't watched Babylon 5 is great. Um, okay, yeah, so you're not I'm sure aware. how that ends. Okay, cool. I no idea. Any final thoughts you want to add into this? Um, what the fuck does everybody want? Right. I in my case. Okay. Um, <laughs> and obviously we come to Michael. That's correct. I mean, I, is it? It's up to you. Uh, <laughs> I'm really not sure either. I have some ideas about what might happen with certain characters and what, but, but like the overall scope, I don't know. I said earlier, and I think I'm might be right that Urglass maybe isn't the big bad guy ultimately. Oh, oh sorry, no. actually. Oh, oh, sorry, I can't. Fragments of Eternity. Gold Egg, Void Egg. Whoa, mm. oh, oh, uh, it's probably not, but there we go. And you Carry know on. that the Drow Queen, the new one, or the old one, however you look at it, did translate Urglass to be an Librian word for eternity. Yeah. So, yeah. There you go. But, sorry, carry on. And, uh, yeah, so what exactly his nature is and his intent, we're not clear on yet, but I, I just, I don't think he's just a final boss battle. I don't think that's what he is. Um, I actually think, although you're very heavily pushing us towards the, you know, you don't really need to deal with Hamani. Maybe we don't, but... You kind of want to, which Hamani's, is cool, right? <laughs> he's not... He's not someone that I think we can trust, and he's not someone that I think has a particularly benevolent agenda. And what did him and Edgar go off and do, right? Yeah. I mean, that guy's dodgy as fuck, too. We know that. Right. We're mean, not going to get in his way, because, because I don't think it. any of us would shed a tear over MLO if he's successfully officer. Yeah, but you also know that MLO is still in the picture, even if she's in pieces. <laughs> yes. But I'm kind of hoping them tearing each other apart is going to distract them a little bit. Mm. And stop them getting too much in our shit. Although inevitably it won't. But it won't. <laughs> that's one of my few definite thoughts. It's not going to. Um, <laughs> I think the there'll be some more weird bullshit with Nix and Alex. Uh, Alex, Alice. Yes. Uh, I mean, Alex <laughs> and Alice. Yes. Uh, Alex and his bullshit. I think because, and I know this because I'm going to take more abilities. Uh, I think and more grafts, necrographs, but in in character they're not necrographs. Evolutions. Um, yeah. All right. So yeah, they're, they're sort of evolution. So we evolutions. We do. Oh, sorry, I'll be honest again. We don't know much about the nature of the relationship with the Bone Sages, and we don't know much about the origins of Barai in general because that's deliberately left vague. I think we find out a bit more, and I think he's going to continue to evolve and change, and maybe in some ways that I'm not even expect. I would not be surprised if there were changes that happened 
that were not simply things that I booked at a list and said, that'd be cool. I'll buy that with my credits, but actually I'm not buying it with my credits. I'm buying to have my uh, evolu- evolving, yeah. ever-changing yeah. physiology checked out. You are out. spending things at cost to achieve yeah. things, yes. yes. So, m- m- something less mechanical, or maybe even something mechanical, but not directly tied to that particular chart of options. Uh, I think see if the- Nesma Kitlik survived somewhere as well, right? Yeah, Might have been true. a refugee somewhere. Yeah. We, uh, I think we'll see both Nyx and uh, Lyco evolve further, mm-hmm. and Alice, and also I think we're going to see a bit of evolution from Zig. Mm-hmm. I think Zig is going to step up in terms of power, because I know he is, because I know <laughs> you've talked about what he's going to be able to do over the course of the game, and he's kind of ascending in a sense, I think. The star think. is rising. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to see our characters all come to embody different aspects. The captain is a fucking black hole. Mm-hmm. Right? Thank you. The, uh, <laughs> the, the abyss, <laughs> right? right? Yep, the abyss, yep. What, what is his little motive power? It's like, you know, I think what we're going to see is this sort of dark gravity aspect emphasized in his power. Zeg is all in on shiny radioactive bullshit. We've got a character who is sort of embodying the transition into something more through technology, through embracing the fact that he's technological in nature. Mm -hmm. And as you say, Alice, who seems to become more akin to organics as time goes on. Mm -hmm. And then you've got me. Stuck in some kind of stasis in the middle. Some sort of not quite undead, not quite alive thing. But who is still, gradually becoming yeah, still like less. evolving, right? And and that's the thing. I'm not becoming more undead in the strictest sense. In the sense that like I'm gaining these abilities that are associated with the undead. But it's not just like I'm slowly decaying. Mm-hmm. I mean, I am, but it's incredibly slow. Like it's like like happening at a fraction of the rate a normal human decays. Right? A living person will die within a. You know, let's say they have a really good quality of life and what have you. They can get a century easy in the future, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'll probably get another two and a half. So I'm not a rotting zombie falling apart because nothing is actually keeping its bits together and it's just yeah, dead you're, mass. You're essentially a well-refrigerated body, right? I, I'm i changing and evolving in ways that the undead don't normally do because the undead aren't normally like this, but there's so few barai and no one knows their origin. Mm-hmm. Or at least, no one admits to knowing their origin. I mean, Sindial was happy to explore that with you, which means yeah. the likelihood other bone sages have knowledge of that, right? Yes. And I think what we're going to find out is it's a transitional phase on the way to something else. Mm-hmm. I think there is a sense of like the characters ascending to become something. Uh, it, it's... it's I'm going to meta-knowledge you guys. I'm, I'm going to yeah. meta-knowledge the ever-loving fuck out of us all. Like this because... entire conversation is not a meta-conversation. Oh yeah, but this is like, I'm, I'm going to bring out the meta-book and slam it down the table. Um, oh, heck. The concept of someone evolving from a character into almost a force is something that has been explored by Ryan in a game previously. <laughs> <laughs> um... Something that uh, something that Nico may also recall. <laughs> this is something that I think could, to a lesser extent, I don't necessarily think we're all going to be going to become like cosmic forces or anything, you know. But I do think there's a sense of like when this game ends up, Zig might have some massive importance because of his connection to this egg, right? He might become like the keeper of it. He might become this force of light. We might have Zora as this force, this counterbalancing, not evil, but counterbalancing the sort of light, this force of of, of darkness, of gravity, uh, of void almost of abyss. <laughs> um, and I think I think we've got like an avatar of Triune potentially to an extent happening here. Yo. And, it's uh, almost like the first words Nix, or should I say Alex, ever said to me. So and I then we've got me. Again, <laughs> that may... I don't... <laughs> As you say, Phrasma isn't the biggest fan of my kind of creature. Mm. There isn't an undeath god that I'm aware of. 
Yeah, oh, undeath is kind of a force, right? Mm. It's something that's there and it is an opposing force so to you're life and death. Kind of grim keeper. You're saying. I'm <laughs> <laughs> and I think <laughs> what I'm becoming is a sort of you know, perhaps a hitherto unseen evolved state of undeath that sort of I can sort of uh, perhaps move into a space where he's no longer like an animated human thing where he is now distinctly something else and that would be interesting for for him because if it means he can sort of survive and, and just sort of go on having his existence then I think he'd probably embrace it. Mm -hmm. It depends exactly what form it takes obviously. I guess it's like it's, it's super interesting hearing this to be honest just in general for like what I have managed to land in terms of concepts and what I've I'm still struggling to get through to you guys, if that makes sense, from my own storytelling. Because mm -hmm. from what I'm hearing now from everybody, I'm enjoying the fact that what I want to be putting down seems to be sticking, which is good. Um, without confirming or denying any aspects. There's of probably some stuff that we've just completely read much more into than you'd ever intended to put down. <laughs> yes, I will not be redrafting that much, put it that way. Um, <laughs> like oh my god they've worked out everything get rid of it everything <laughs> space squid now um, but yeah like for me I, as GM this has been a fucking wild ride <laughs> you fun <laughs> um, you stand for oh. yeah yeah just attack out of nowhere just I'll literally just start reading during the sessions the last book of that series just start going and then Luke Skywalker tried to use the force on the you stand for wait wait Wait, Wait. <laughs> I don't remember being in the crew. Um, but yeah, so thank you for this ridiculous catch-up chat. It was fantastic. It was nice and very much yes. a nice way of us remembering what we don't remember about the game. Um, <laughs> oh, definitely. It'll be, nice Wait, to yeah, it'll be nice to compare this to our post-game chat when we actually close the game off. Mm. Um, I'm super, super easy, eager for that because if I can keep the ending in mind I have that's still on track so far um, I think you'll find this quite funny to listen back to once we're there um, so I think <laughs> what we'll do is we'll finish the game, listen back to this, then record <laughs> our thoughts um, I think we should do that I think that'd be quite a fun experience because obviously we can skip a bunch of this to get to all the juicy bits um, mostly this ending conversation and that'll be quite an interesting thing to record with you guys uh, also just looking forward to whatever we do next because I mean what's everybody's like instinctual feeling of do you want to do more sci-fi or do you want to go, back, go back to fantasy right like what's the thoughts I have a few fantasy characters that I've mm -hmm. wanted to play for a while but also sci-fi ones I'm starting to think up so I mm -hmm. kind of want to jump sideways and do something modern okay yeah um, okay I'll just go I oh, no, just vibes to do something or Supernatural or something. I think this game showed okay. me that I can do horror in moderation, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, something I'd like a horror. Down like Tales of the Loop would be interesting, actually. I know, I need to dive into um, the system. I do. Um, yeah, something that's kind of a bit of a different twist on you know, running around in big politics and you mm, know, killing yeah. things. Something like Tales of the Loop, you don't yeah. do killing and you can't be killed, mm. basically. Yeah, it's all like um, narrative positioning instead of death and health. Yeah. Uh, which is um, interesting. I think that would really stretch us. Yeah, um, it'd be interesting because it, it, it would teach me how to GM in different ways, right? Because um, obviously, mm -hmm. f for those of you familiar with my styles, I like grand campaigns. Um, yeah. No. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. Um, Whereas I, I open the Tales in the Loop book and they're talking about, uh, you know, you have you set up a scene where you're in conflict with your dad who, <laughs> you know, doesn't want you to go out or something, or you think your parent, one of your parents is cheating on the other and things, it's like yeah, there's those there's a mistakes. social structure in yeah. there, and yeah, like it's a super, like from what I know of the system it's probably going to be really tough at the start to wrap his head around it, it's probably super yeah. rewarding from a roleplay point of view during it because mm -hmm. none of this clunky Paizo yeah. style gets but it's the exact opposite end of the mm -hmm. spectrum right now um, yeah. my alternative is uh, jump into Monster of the Week and try to run 15 seasons of Supernatural Okay, uh, I can <laughs> summarise that. Sam. <laughs> Dean. That was a show that I very quickly tired of, but yeah. I like Monster of the Week. I, I don't know yeah. if you've noticed this about me. Well, yeah. Do you know what uh. we could do then, right? So here's a thought, right? 
Monster of the Week and GM of the Week. Boom. Yeah. So I've been warned. If we do that, these are all taking a turn. Just saying. We can be ghost hunters. That can be our interim game, right? Interim game, even. Where we maybe do a week of that each, and then you can. We'll go back to something more grandiose, like I'm used to. Uh, yeah. Because I can we do can Cyberpunk as well. Oh. I would like to do Cyberpunk at some point. I've got that carbon system and mm -hmm. other such things. If I have the gods system by then, which I kickstarted, I'll probably want to run yeah. that, which I have no idea how that is going to go. Um, yeah. I just think, Joe, going from this campaign to something like Cyberpunk would be quite dark on dark. I kind yes. of want something a little bit on the campy end of RP. Yeah, like, that's to, why uh, I want mm, to try and see what you guys do. As a do. Because obviously my Friday game is fantasy at the moment, and it's obviously yeah. grand campaign fantasy, high fantasy, and I wonder what they want to do next. So, yeah. The thing is, I don't mind mixing and matching the, the groups as well. I would like our four to become at least five for our next game. Yeah. yeah. The alternative is I really want to do a Star Wars game at some point. I do want to run oh. Star Wars. Yeah. You know, I've always wanted to play as a Sith pure blood in a Star Wars game, even though the pure bloods are actually really diluted blood. Right, so, so to um, answer that question right there, I will run an evil Star Wars campaign. And I well, he wouldn't be evil. I use the term just evil be ethnically mostly, Sith. right? And <laughs> my my take on that is that I don't. I want to run an old Republic game, but oh, I, also, I only have stats for the original era for stuff, mm -hmm. right? There are so few stats for old Republic stuff. So the idea of me using Star Destroyers and TIE Fighters appeals to me, but then I don't want to do all the admin work of having to redress it all, because my god do I hate the admin work. Mm -hmm. So I would love to just run an alternative Star Wars where if somebody wanted to play a, pu a pure blood Sith, that can happen and we just ignore that that didn't ever happen in Star Wars in the original era. Does that make sense? I mean, um, pure bloods in the Legends, they survived that long. The thing is, let's uh, face it, it's Star Wars. If Colin wanted to play a pure yeah. blood Sith, I can just say, you have awoke from the tomb where you slept by accident, and now you're here. The thing is, like, here, here's how I imagine it, right? Genes don't always work the way we anticipate them to. Sometimes there are things kicking about in our genome. Oh, medical kind of think of there. Yeah. Right? And I mean, the Force is genetically inherited. Force, the Force is a heritable trait, guys. Now, you can imagine that things that are still there, sort of almost as like filler, atavistic bits and bobs that haven't been lost from some human with ancient Sith blood, mm. happens to buy another human with a bit of ancient. Mm -hmm, a couple yeah. of generations of you have a minutely higher amount of Sith blood than most people and then eventually you get someone who's a significant portion and maybe that's all it takes mm -hmm. for some trait that would lead to face tentacles coming back, you know? Yeah. Well, there's some fairly important well, some books uh, where there's like, yeah, a bunch of Sith who you know, been stuck on planet for five thousand years, trying to get their ass off it. Um, so, like, that's um, for me. That would be an interesting year. conversation to have. See, just in general, the what would people want from a Star Wars game? Because everybody has a different view of Star Wars, right? Trying to make that marry up is very difficult. And I just know that most of the resources I have are from those three core books, right? Yeah. So I have no issue setting a game at any point. So long as when I attack you with waves of TIE Fighters, you just accept that they're not TIE Fighters. Yeah. And that they're, in fact, older. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's a thing that I'm happy to do as well. I'd love to, I, I'm desperate to go back to Star Wars. It's going to involve Sith Wizards. It's just going to like. It's, I mean, that is what I want to play, yes. Yeah, so yeah. I hope so. <laughs> so I'm stuck so be between a scoundrel or an assassin droid. So, yeah, please do the Assassin Droid, because it's like... That's that. very you. thing is, yeah. it's also what I would want to play, and you also are playing the kind of technomancer engineer robot in this <laughs> game for me, so um, you have to... I am the Ryan thing. plant. Thank you. I have to say, I, I would I would have to play, like, we've talked about this, I think we've, we've all seen um, Skywalker Skywalks again, right? Let's yep. not spoil this on our <laughs> catch up chat, shall we? Light yeah. spoiler, very light. Sure it's a dark the force spoiler. is basically magic and it finally treats it as such yes 
Um, it was the Metachlorians when they were. Right? That's what I love they about were many witches. Force when they're not. When it's not being treated as yes, when it's, uh, when it's life is an it. It's the Sith sorcerer, sorcerer idea. That is to me mm -hmm. really yeah. fucking cool. Yep, it's why I love the Dathomir witches as well. And it's also why I, I partly like love witchcraft. it because it exists, but also alongside things like the Jedi, quasi mystical. Are we some form of Eastern religion as interpreted by a fat white man? Yes, uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that like the the Jedi the are all balance and virginity and moon wearing shit robes, and then you've got the ancient Seth who are like we are wizards mm -hmm. and we will do lightning unto each other, and that's great. That's <laughs> great that those both Copy exist. The sure. no worries. Um, yeah, I think pretty much my my goal for a Star Wars game would be, I guess, a, just a morally freeing <laughs> time period. Being the old republic, right, would be the dream. Mm -hmm. um, I already have a car like a player in mind that could easily fulfil that role. I would go to six maximum um, for the game. Um, I think because six, five is my favourite number. Six is a good number still. It buys you five for the majority of the game if you take yeah. six players. Um, plus, it means you can split off into groups if you had to and not have seven timelines, right? Like we have in Starfinder. Um, with Seven. four people, and um, yeah, so I definitely think I'd like to do Star Wars. I, um, it does seem to be the winning game so far for me because Star Wars is its own fantasy world, even though it's set in sci-fi. Like it's it's a bunch of wizards and knights and evil soldiers. So yeah, it's as it wouldn't be a, a terrible sidestep, right? Because we're stepping into fairly well-known lore as well. Um, mm -hmm. There's also not... People don't just teleport from planet to planet a lot in Star Wars. There's a much more, as Alex was talking about earlier, you versus the wild element to it. Like, getting from A to B, you need to go from the jungle to the starport to get on the, the shuttle to go up into space to hyperjump to another planet to land. There's no just falling through a pond like Zig does and teleporting a year into the future. It happens. It's becoming a regular occurrence in this game as well now. Yeah. What about you? Like, what would you like to do next? Cal? What's your, what would your dream game next be? Oh, and I mean specifically see, with us lot, obviously. Like, uh, as opposed to with anybody else. Because screw them. Having um, talked on a Triumph Day. Yes. Um, Wonderful Triumph Day. Which I great. know really desperately the, the more I think about it the more I want to be a shopkeeper <laughs> <laughs> okay right. so, uh, elaborate for the rest of them <laughs> alright okay so um, in, in Ryan's unfinished system there's this sort of class type thing where you're kind of not really combat based at all whatsoever um and you know you you kind of focus more on the like the crafting side of things um be that you know physically crafting things or making you know magical items and various other things and i just love the idea of essentially being the, the old man guns <laughs> mm -hmm. um where you know you're set like the the party is kind of restricted in the sense that you know if they want to get the good gear they got to come to old man guns um and if they want old man guns to go with them he's got to resource manage all his stuff and decide right what am i taking with me if you get me the stuff i'll make it for you but you know probably like when it comes to merchant slash blacksmith i guess yeah yeah and when it comes to rooting shooting cowboy booting um I'm, I might. <laughs> yeah, that's on the other classes in the game. Yeah. So <laughs> everyone else. All um, shopkeepers. Yes. <laughs> just, Competing shopkeepers. It's just a budget spreadsheet at that point, that game, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I know there's <laughs> just something. Sure there's something. <laughs> there's something really, like, appealing to that. Like, right now, I think it's because it's so different to anything that. And I can guarantee it. Let's. If we take the example of Star Wars, right? 
we could definitely make you a merchant in a Star Wars game. Like, or a crafter in a Star Wars game as a focus instead of a combat focused character. So the idea that the, the party were a crew of mercs, for example, to take Alex's um, bounty hunter idea, you would need the armorer, right? That person that their job is to use all the cool stuff everybody else finds and make you guys cooler swords or lightsabers or swoop bikes or whatever. Um, pretty much the Nyx of this group, only Nyx is also a fucking battle cannon. Um, yes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it is totally possible in Star Wars to do something like that, if that's the one we went for. Or Stars Without Number, we went down to engineering slash kind of social merchant type plumber. person. Space plumber. Yeah. Um, yes. Plumber. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, we can definitely make that happen for you as well. It means you don't play the um, 12 year old nuclear bomb. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, but I, I think it's because it's just something so different to Dennis. Like, normally, you know, I would play a. Like, if I were doing Star Wars, I go, all right, okay, well, I'm just going to be the big space wizard man. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. But that's the thing, right? Would everybody want to be a force sensitive if we did a Star Wars game? And by that, I mean, you don't need to focus on it, but you would have access to it if you wanted to develop it later. Would that be a thing? Obviously, Alex, you get excused if you pick a droid, of course. No, no. I want to be, um, what's his name? <laughs> Skippy? The Force, yep. Yep. <laughs> the best Star Wars character. I am the Force sensitive droid that sends R2D2 on his way. Uh, you could definitely be more like a. Oh, God, yeah. I, I know this theory. <laughs> <laughs> I, know this. <laughs> I love it, but I hate it at the same time. But I think, see if you're saying that droids can have. Sentience, which they say is not the case in Star Wars. Droids are things, wrong. not people. I know, right? But Star Wars primarily says droids are things, not people. And I am like, but they're clearly people, right? They're clearly people. Yeah. George um, Lucas is not a person. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry again. No, he's a fat person. Um, that doesn't mean not a person. <laughs> and then. Um, having... I don't know why I'm so mean to George Lucas. <laughs> sorry, George. Um, I'm sure he's very upset listen, with all of his money. George, uh, I, I have a few pounds I can spare to lose. I, I understand. George, George Lucas is literally pounds. the George Lucas of sci fi. Yeah. That's <laughs> completely true. That's the most likely thing you've ever said. Um, but yeah, in conclusion of that nonsense. Um, Undebatable, frankly. I don't know. I think the book specifically states that droids can't be force sensitive and. If I was running that system, I wouldn't want to deviate from the core books yeah. primarily. So I'm not sold on necessarily being a droid. Well, I was just like, I know because you um, mentioned it, I was yeah. saying that I wouldn't have... Could he be a hut? I mean, I actually think there are stats to play a hut. Oh, oh my sense god! To ninja hut. Um, because huts are very... Which is also can. Um, yeah. Uh, That's it, hut party. Teenage mutant hut. force sensitive hut. Yeah. How do they move? Do they like, are they like snakes or slugs? Both. Uh, Slakes. I, I assume they probably the... move normally like a slug. slug. If they're in a hurry, they could probably be like a snake, you know. And if they got the force, they can use force speed, or which they... is terrifying. <laughs> Why do they just wear one rollerblade, one giant? I was blade? actually like reading that up, like, watching a YouTube video about a story about like the one yep. hot like mm -hmm. Jedi mm -hmm. ended up becoming like a dark Jedi and ended up becoming yes. like a king of a planet. Uh, <laughs> I love. Star Wars Legends and I'll go You know what? I, I like to go in the, the Sith, so I can't be too angry. Beldorian the Hut. That was it. But one day I'm running a skip campaign. A what, sorry, campaign? Uh, skipping the droids uh, and the various force sensitive droids that have appeared. Yeah, the unsung uh. droids, right? Um, I think I mean, uh, oh, that's called spare parts, that campaign, just telling you. Yeah, um, it would also it, include I mean, the thing canon explore. representation of Santa. <laughs> because, right, doesn't. What does it mean? Like, they clearly are sentient, right? That's obvious. Right, yeah. But they're also not organic living beings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's not necessarily a contradiction there. Correct. And also, the Force doesn't care if it's electronic or not, because the Force can, like, reprogram droids from scratch, because it's energy, right? And then, as well, but like, do, when there's machinery... Do a metachlorian conduit in so, droids? That is the interesting thing where if midichlorians are some weird bacteria that live in blood yeah that's bullshit in my game it won't be that I'm just gonna put that out there 
the force is that mystical thing called Ryan, the GM. So yeah, but I want to slap my droid and say you can so many midichlorians. Yeah, if you yeah. want to slap your droid, oh my god! Um, Alex, <laughs> like we can discuss that off of the recording. Oh, right, wait, 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 right. Um, uh, what's it called? A uh, thing that that separates out blood. Um, the centrifugal thing. Yeah. yeah. Autoclave. It's an autoclave, right? There's a there's a mountain goat song, which is how I know words apparently. Um, that you That's could fair. have one of those that that separates the blood, and so you could harvest midichlorians. That is my entire character story now for my bounty hunter droid that is also force sensitive in your world that refuses so to acknowledge midichlorians. So you're hunting <laughs> force sensitives for their To plans. take their force. This right. is a bad okay. idea. However, okay. I like Because droid should be allowed to use the force too. Uh, the funny thing is that was the plot of the game Nico was in. <laughs> there was a, an Imperial officer hu like hunting force sensitives to take their blood. So she was transfusing herself with it. To put them into droids. No, to force put them into force droids. <laughs> roger, <laughs> roger. Everyone's a force user. Roger, roger. No one is. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think let's wrap up our <laughs> chat, shall we, here, and we'll talk off air about everything else. Notes and see. Um, <laughs> thanks roger, to anyone roger. that decided to listen to this. Well done for sticking through this. My God. You are an absolute roger, trooper. Roger. Um, You're welcome. Get to hear. Hopefully, you'll want to go back and listen to how many things we got wrong. Very reasonably the priced therapist. Um, I've never been wrong. <laughs> this is it. If you're just joining us now, that's actually nothing to do with any of the campaign. You should go listen to every episode. <laughs> yeah, there's actually there's prizes all through the episodes, so go get them. Um, hashtag no prizes. Join the ARG. Actually, prizes. as of tonight, there, we may have another listener because I mentioned a colleague that that's what I Good. was doing with you, poor soul. Uh, do you oh. give him a shout out? Uh, hello, that colleague. He's forgotten the name. This all. Oh uh Should I? Should I do that? Okay. If if you if you make it somehow this deep into it, congratulations, Laura. Well done. I'm impressed. Woo, Woo. listeners. Yeah. Woo. Valid listen to all of it. Like and subscribe. Highest level Patreon. To be fair, she's an adult, like an actual adult, not like us adults. You so. told adults about us. How dare you? Yeah. We've hidden from them this <laughs> this long. <laughs> She has small people of her own to do with, right? Oh I think. Oh, you mean dear. additional subscribers? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, look. That's our now. There's great. That's a child. Look. Yeah, let's yeah. let's convince him to spend money on our microtransactions. Yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> Such an impressionable mind. That's the best person I go for. Yeah. <laughs> on that note, let us close this off by saying our usual um, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. And good night. Bye.